everyone. What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah Vandermeer, editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine, here with a couple guys from the Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy sitting right next to me here. Today's show, Students Against the Drug War. We're going to be talking to a bunch of students who are very interested in this issue that are fighting the drug war, both on the US and Canadian side of the border. Um, so we will definitely um, have a great show for you today. Also on the show, we have Jody Emery coming on to talk about her campaign with the BC Greens. We have Maria Stoner in the house. We have Anya Ganja from the Stoner Girls Guide on the show as well. And Drew Stromberg, he's our main guest, and he's from the Sensible, sorry, the Students for Sensible Drug Policy in the US. Um, he'll be talking, us, talking to us by telephone, or actually, hopefully, we'll be able to get uh, Anya in on Skype so you guys will be able to see her on the big screen behind me here. And all right, boys, we're going to, before we get into too much with you guys, we're going to um, play some videos, but I want to get both of your names here. Mike, what was your name and your last name again? Uh, I'm Mike Ford. I'm from the Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy SFU chapter. SFU chapter. And say, say your last name one more time. Uh, Mike Ford. Ford. Mike yeah. Ford. Okay. And right. you, Yusuf. Yeah, Yusuf Samurai from the uh, CSSDP uh, Quantlin chapter. Cool. Sorry, say your last name one more time. Samurai. Wow, it's a Samurai. That's oh, pretty yes. awesome. <laughs> nice last name. Awesome. Um, and yeah, we'll be talking to you guys about an event that's happening here in Vancouver at Simon Fraser University on April 12th. That's next Friday. And uh, we'll get into what that is with you guys in a little bit. I'm going to play some videos first. And of course, we're going to hit the bong and all that kind of stuff. Are both you guys smoking, by the way? I should ask you. I got to study this evening. So okay, all right. No worries, no worries. Are I, you? I study in smoke. You study in smoke. All right. I wish, I wish. There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to load this bong up. I don't even have any of my weed and stuff next to me. Don't even have a glass of water or anything. A little ill prepared here. But uh, maybe I should play a video for you guys because there's a bunch of stuff happening in the media and I like to keep on top of this stuff for you guys. We're always playing clips from CNN and other places, MSNBC, what the mainstream media is talking about pot. Usually there's a lot of horse shit involved when they do talk about pot. Um, and some of these clips aren't an exception. Actually, one of them, Ethan Nadelman, he's pretty good. This is a pretty good clip with Ethan on CNN. Um, Ethan Nadelman of the Drug Policy Alliance in the United States. This video, I think, just was posted this morning online. Um, and I'm going to play this for you guys super quick here. Just going to make sure I got the sound mixed properly. Um, sorry to do this on the air, but <laughs> yes, this is the live broadcasting speakers audio. OK, it looks good. So I'm going to play this video for you guys. When we get back, we're going to start getting into our students versus the drug war theme here and talk to these guys on the couch. Puff down at 420 as well. Mers are now favoring legalizing marijuana. Right now, here is the state of pot in the United States. 18 different states plus the District of Columbia have chosen to legalize pot for medical use. Two of those states, Colorado and Washington State, have approved it for recreational use as well. That happened during the 2012 election. And joining us now for their take on the sea change in public opinion on the legalization of pot and if it will make any difference at all, CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, who joins us by phone. And then in San Francisco, Ethan Nadelman of the Drug Policy Alliance, which advocates for the legalization of pot. Mr. Nadelman, let me begin with you. We've seen this before, where generations of people change and attitudes change, and then laws follow shortly thereafter. They change. Do you expect that will be the case here? Well, it's definitely going to be the case, Ashley. You know, back in the late 70s, people thought we were on the verge of decriminalization or legalization of marijuana. But back then, barely a third of Americans were in favor. And most of the older generation were not baby boomers. They didn't know the difference between marijuana and heroin. Now you're seeing this Pew poll, Gallup polls, a whole range of others consistently showing a small majority of Americans in favor. So what happened in Washington and Colorado during the last election is going to happen again in other states around the country. In the same way that medical marijuana was legalized either through the initiative process or the legislative process in 18 states to date, we're going to see that same thing happening with the broader legalization of marijuana. 
Let me bring in Jeffrey Tubin on this. You know, a, a lot of people make the case about same-sex marriage and that attitudes change with regard to same-sex marriage. And the states shortly started changing as well. There have been a number of states, I think we're at nine now, that, uh, that allow same-sex marriage. And yet, there is this wisdom out there that drugs are different, that marijuana is different, that this isn't maybe a civil rights issue that other people think it is. Do, do you see the argument there as being apples and oranges? Well, there, there is a parallel, but there's also a very important difference. Uh, with same-sex marriage, uh, the federal government cannot and does not prohibit states from allowing same-sex marriage. Um, there's a Defense of Marriage Act which limits certain benefits for, for gay couples who are married, but, but they certainly don't prohibit it. What makes marijuana different and, and frankly unpredictable in how it will work is that even though Washington and Colorado have voted to legalize marijuana, it is still a federal crime to possess marijuana. And how federal and state law interacts as those states move towards legalization, I think, is the really big question that's unresolved so, at this point. So help me answer that question, or at least get as close as, as you can to an answer, Jeffrey. Do, do you think that maybe the polls that are out there and the growing support for legalizing marijuana for recreational or medicinal purposes may have an effect on whether the feds decide to ever prosecute any state where it's legal? Well, I think um, that is a process that is unfolding. I don't think the political support for legalization is anywhere near the level where you would have Congress simply um, repeal the federal marijuana laws, but there, there is an ongoing negotiation process between those states and the federal government about how they will prosecute it. But, but frankly, I mean, maybe Ethan knows better than I do, but I don't know how the federal and state laws will interact as these states move to, in, move to legalize. It's really a difficult question. Ethan, I know you make this your, your, your daily work. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Ashley, I mean, Jeffrey's exactly right. What's going on right now is that the governors of Washington and Colorado, uh, Inslee and Hickenlooper, have asked the Justice Department, Attorney General Holder and the White House, give us a chance to implement these new laws. And, and Holder is obviously struggling with what to do right here. Now, here's the real dilemma, which is that the feds, to say to these governors in these two states, yes, go ahead, we're going to give you a qualified green light to implement these laws, is the right thing in terms of public safety, public health, finance, responsible regulation, regulating marijuana like alcohol. If, on the other hand, the feds say, no way, federal law just trumps, that's it, we're not going to let you do this, then what's going to happen is it's not like marijuana is going to go away. It's still going to be produced and sold, but it's all going to continue to be illegal. It'll all be in the hands of the criminals. And what that means from my perspective as an activist is that when we see the next wave of ballot initiatives coming up and legislation around the country, instead of doing these kind of responsible regulatory models to tax and regulate marijuana, the alternative is going to be to do what Americans did in the late 1920s and early 1930s with alcohol prohibition, well, which is to remains. repeal the state mar marijuana prohibition laws and just say to the feds, if you want to enforce these laws, go ahead and try. Remains to be seen whether that's the pattern that, that will be followed, but I can, I can say this, there are a lot of people out there uh, who, who disagree with you and say it's not a safety issue um, at all, in fact, or it is a safety issue, but not for the reasons that, that you say. You and I are going to have more conversations on this, Ethan Adelman, well, thanks so much for being with me. I know, but from a rational perspective, you want to regulate this, not criminalize it. That's De the depends on what you consider this. rational. <laughs> I have to leave it there, but thank you so yeah, much no, that's uh, right. for being I with us. With and Jeffrey Tubin, as always, I love to have your perspective. Thanks for, for uh, grabbing a few moments of your time uh, for us as well, Jeff. We're back. All right. So, yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Seems we have a problem with returning from certain videos. It freezes everything up. Not really sure what's going on there. But uh, hopefully we can get that fixed. Maybe next show we won't. We'll have to stop using Procaster to run videos. I don't know, man. One way or another, there's always something with, with live stream. Um, <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, Ethan Nadelman on CNN, he's great. Um, what You were going to say something when we thought we were actually back, but we weren't. Uh, what were you saying? Yeah, it's, it's just a little frustrating to think that the hey, grab the mic. There we are. 
Yeah, so I was just saying, like, haven't seen the U.S. sort of make so much progress compared to us in terms of their drug laws and drug policies. It's a little frustrating. They, yeah. Especially they have, like, a multi-billion dollar budget, and they recognize some of this is going to waste. So let's not criminalize these people who are essentially harmless. I know. I, mean, I always thought it was going to be us that did it first, you know? I'm sure everybody did. Yeah. But now you got, you know, you got Colorado and, and Washington, which is, like, awesome, sweet. But, but what's going on with us? We're up here. We're happy for them. Yeah. But we need to take care of ourselves, right? Yeah, I know. It's totally true, man. And that's what you guys are up to. Um, we should talk maybe a little bit about what's happening over at SFU. Um, we're going to bring Drew Stromberg on to talk about what's going on with the American Students for Sensible Drug Policy. That's where you guys basically got the start for this whole idea. You guys are part of chapters of that. Well, first there was the American one, then there was the Canadian one, and now you guys have chapters here. Um, but yeah, so maybe tell us a little bit about what's happening at SFU on April 12th. Yeah, well, April 12th, uh, there's going to be a big event. It's going to be all day uh, from noon to about 6 p.m. There's about uh, six speakers, uh, seven speakers coming down. It's going to be a full-day event. It's going to be in, right in the center of the Convocation Mall. should be pretty sweet. All of you should come check it out. Um, just as uh, some people on the dais, we got uh, Atal Wahid Lahai. He's a, uh, he's a, he's, he's a Muslim figure in, in the Muslim community in, in a specific sect of it. I don't remember the name of uh, the Ahmadiyya um, sect of uh, Islam. Uh, there's David Mamala Levine, of course, which I'm sure all of you do know. DML. Uh, <laughs> DML will actually be on the show today, we're hoping. Oh, it's 420, is it? Oh. 420. Uh -oh. All right, you keep talking. I'm going to hit the bong here. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we got uh, Judith Renaud from the Educators of the Sensible Drug Policy. We got Baron Crawford, who's representing the Christian Fellowship of Canada. Ted Smith from Hempology 101 out of uh, UVic. Uh, we got Chris Bennett, uh, the author of, uh, he's the owner of the Urban Shaman downstairs. Um, he's also he's done a bunch of work. I'm sure all of you know about it. Uh, really interesting. Chris Bennett, he's well known around here, that's for sure. Good friend of the show. Of course. And uh, there's also Darwin Augustus Ivan Burns uh, from the Green Party. Um, and the whole purpose of the event is to look at a religious and cultural perspective within drug policy. So that's why you got the mix of uh, a couple of religious uh, figures coming in, uh, as well as the political and everything. So it should be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if we want to add anything about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a bit of a combination of both education, um, different perspectives, diversity from the speakers, and then there's going to be a couple bands playing. Uh, we got a couple different student groups out, so it's going to be it's kind of an all-around fun time. Yeah. Nice, excellent. Yeah, and this is at the Simon Fraser University campus. Is this the the Burnaby campus? Yeah, the yeah, one on Burnaby on the Mountain. main campus. And if you're in Vancouver or Greater Vancouver, come and check it out. The campus is really cool, actually. I yeah. like that up there. It's, it's going to be a nice day. It should be beautiful. Yeah. Maybe have a little nice smoke session afterwards, looking on top of the city. And this is an all-day event, right? It's from 10 in the morning to 6 at night? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Cool. Now, how did you guys personally get involved in this fight, at, you know, in terms of um, on campus and that kind of thing? And how do you start a chapter of the Students for Sensible Drug Policy? Um, well, the Canadian Students for Central, Sen uh, Sensible Drug Policy, it's a national-wide national organization. Um, we've got tons of chapters in cities all across Canada. Um, I personally got started at Club Days at Simon Fraser. Um, I just transfer transferred there from UVic. And, uh, and yeah, we, we do like uh, harm reduction outreach events. Um, um, Yusuf here from the Kwantlen University chapter, um, they do, they've been doing a bunch of speaker events. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, for me personally, uh, I got involved uh, because I'm a policy study student, so I'm really interested in policy and changing the things we, we do things. Some things work, some things don't, and it's all about taking into account the different, the ter different actors that, that all sort of are involved within a decision. Uh, with, with drug policy, I'm sure we all have very similar opinions, so I can't really preach preach to the same crowd. Uh, but I got involved because I really think activism is, is the way to get things done. It's worked before, it's a, and it'll, it'll work now. Uh, every movement that you see, it always ends up having an impact, whether it's small, like the Occupy movement. Sure, they may not exist as, in a bigger number anymore, but but that's still in our heads, and people do think about these things a lot. And I think that's very powerful, uh, very very powerful for us, and uh, for the Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Um, it did die down, but we're trying to bring it back to life, and we're trying to establish our presence here um, to make people aware of these issues. Um, yeah, and, and, and as as Mike was saying, at Quan, we've we've hosted a. Uh, Cannabis Education Speaker Series. We've had we've had three speakers. We have Chris Bennett coming in next week. If anybody's in Surrey, it's April 9th, uh, the Tuesday from 1 to 4 at Quantum Surrey. Um, and, and yeah, we just want to get the word out there and make sure people who don't know about it do know about it. Because we all maybe live in a bubble, but it's about getting the word out and getting other people to, to understand where we're coming from. 
Yeah, exactly. And it, this isn't like, you know, it, it's different than maybe the clubs on campus of yesteryear that were like pot smoking clubs and things like that. This is an anti-prohibition club, so yeah, it kind of has a more serious air to it than just a bunch of guys getting together Definitely. puffing weed and that kind of thing. And occasionally yeah. we do that as well. well and that no, nothing hurts. Nothing hurts. Yeah. You got to get together and puff the weed as well. <laughs> but sometimes you got to like, you know, put on the public oh, face. And totally. Unfortunately, Absolutely. if you don't do it that way in the society we live in now, nobody can really take it seriously. Absolutely. It's a sad thing, it's, but it's true, unfortunately. Because yeah. I don't really necessarily agree with uh, the, I think people should be free to be who they are, no matter what. But yeah. still, sometimes you got to like, you know, paint yourself up and get out there to attract the people you want to and change their minds too. And, and that's where the lobbying power comes from, right? That's that's <laughs> yeah. power in numbers. And I mean, this is such an opportune time. I mean, with with the legalization in Washington and in Colorado. Um, you know, we've got a huge opportunity here to make a big difference, and it's because of this change in percep perception that's really, really motivated by the youth. Right. So, I mean, to all you students out there, I really urge you to uh, either like get involved, see if there's a local chapter. If not, I mean, it's really easy to really easy to start one. Contact the CSSDP board and and get things going. And like, you know, um, we have a big opportunity with with not just cannabis here, but hopefully, you know, minimizing the impacts of prohibition, if not eliminated in the in the future. Right. Well, there's definitely a long way to come here in Canada, but I think that it's important that the students themselves are the ones who get behind this in a big way because they're really the ones who are affected by the drug war. You know, a lot of young people. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's there's students of all ages, of course, but the majority of students I think are probably young people, and they are affected by this in a big way, and that's who uh, the cops love to go after for this stuff. Um, yeah, so I think we should bring on Drew and. Before we do that, though, um, you guys, one more time, we should drop the name of the... Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you can bring it up on the screen, oh, but... Oh, yeah, right. Here, I'm going to try and get that up here. Yep, yeah, uh, sure. So just as the names one more time, we've got uh, Atal uh, Wahid Lahai. Uh, he's an Ahmadiyya representative from the, uh, is from, uh, from the Muslim Church. Um, David Mamo Levine, of course. Uh, not going to be able to open it, so you just got to show that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Judith Renaud, Baron Crawford, Ted Smith, Chris Bennett, and yeah. Darwin... August, Ivan Burns. Uh, that's April 12th, I think it was. April it was 12th from 10 till 6 p.m. at the Simon Fraser University Burnaby campus um, yeah, in Convocation go. Mall. It's like the big main main um, main uh, square there. Ask anyone; they'll know where it is. <laughs> if you also search the event on Facebook, it should be there as well. Yeah. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Thank you. Do the big walk around the set. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, well, let's bring Drew on here. Marius, maybe you can figure that out while we uh, continue to do things here, like hit the bong. Uh, and I did have a bag of weed that I just brought down here. Couldn't have lost it already, could I have? That'd be funny. I, somehow I did. That, oh, that tends to happen. <laughs> ah, stoner. There's my bag of weed. Nice. Oh, and speaking of bags of weed. Med Mart in the house here. Kush.ca. What's up, man? What's that? You replaced me. Temporarily. 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 Hello? Right. Hey, Drew. All right. Hi, this is Drew. Drew, how you doing, man? We're on the air. This is Jeremiah, Cannabis Culture News Live. Good to have you on. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing well, man. Um, I'm just going to turn the volume down a teeny tiny bit. I'm pretty good, thank you. So pretty you're good, in yeah. Washington, D.C. right now. Yep, calling in from Washington, D.C. Just finished up a week of work here. Fantastic, and hopefully the audience can hear you there. If you guys have a problem hearing them, is it coming through? Yeah. It, they they want me to turn the mics up just a little bit here. Okay, Drew. So. I wanted to have you on today. We have a couple students from local chapters of the Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy on the show sitting right next to me here. But um, I wanted to have you on to talk a little bit about the organization there in the U.S., your guys' mandate, and what you guys are up to these days. So maybe you could tell me a bit about what's going on there. Sure, sure. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, my name is Drew Stromberg. I'm the outreach director, or one of the outreach directors for Students for Sensible Drug Policy. And uh, we were started in 1998, um, and basically what we, what we try to do is we are students changing drug laws, and our ultimate goal is to end, uh, end drug prohibition. And we don't think that human beings should be locked in cages for, for nonviolent drug offenses, and, um, 
and you know we um, we truly are a grassroots movement. We've got over 200 chapters at uh, college campuses all across the country. I mean, all across the world. And um, you know, we we really we at the core of it, we are students changing drug laws. Cool. And so, how was this the the work of a few people? How did this organization get started, really? Um, so it actually got started at um, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, and they, it was, it was in response to, um, so in the U.S., um, what we have here is when you apply for financial aid for college, there's something called the, um, the Higher Education Act. And basically, um, there was a provision in there that would deny you financial aid if you had been previously convicted of a drug offense. Um, so SSDP was founded to fight back against that provi provision. And we've actually been pretty successful in that over the years. Um, Right now, I believe its current status is that it will only apply if you were arrested um, for a drug offense while you're while you were already receiving financial aid. So if you received financial aid, so I mean, if you were if you were arrested before you're applying for financial aid, then it doesn't apply anymore. I believe. Wow, well, that's a, a crazy thing that everybody once you're you know caught up in the web of the drug war that you can't go to school, you can't do certain things. If you go to jail, you can't vote. It's really you, it makes you a public enemy. Uh, well, so uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, what you guys are doing these days at Sensible Students for Sensible Drug Policy in the U.S. How, and like, how big is the scope of the organization now? You guys have a lot of chapters all across the U.S., right? Sure. Um, so we have about a uh, U.S. chapters go. We have just under two hundred. Um, and what our efforts look like is. is um, with uh, Amendment 64, the Colorado Marijuana Legalization uh, Campaign that happened in November 2012, um, we were very involved in that. Our students helped to collect signatures to get it on the ballot. Um, and we also, our students all across the country, made phone calls to Colorado voters. We made over 17,000 phone calls um, talking to people about the initiative, making sure everyone was informed and, and that they knew how and where to vote. Um, and in, in other areas where, you know, we don't have a a marijuana legalization ballot um, initiative on the ballot. Some some of the things that our chapters do are, um, you know, we'll, we'll, they'll bring in speakers, they'll write for the newspaper, uh, they'll have events, and um, so kind of to get the community talking about drug policy and, and these issues. Um, our chapters also do a lot of lobbying. We'll, they'll meet with their um, their campus administrators, their state uh, legislators. They'll and um, and sometimes we'll even do some federal lobbying. We actually have a uh, we have something planned for the summer where we're going to try to bring in a bunch of students to Washington D.C. and uh, and lobby the federal government. Very cool. And so, Drew, how did you get involved with this group? What made you want to do this when you were you were a student on a campus? I'm sure. Right. Yeah. So uh, so I went to West Virginia University and. Um, and I got involved in SSDP in 2009 when I started the chapter there. And the reason that I got involved was because it just seemed like, um, like it seemed obvious. It was like, why isn't anyone doing this yet? Of, of course we should change our drug laws. Um, so I didn't see anyone doing it. So I, I, I took it upon myself to, to get people talking about it. And do you think, like, have you had a lot of success on campus? Does this really resonate with people? Do you wish that more people were involved? Like, how's the response? Oh, definitely. Um, the response tends to be, like, you know, you would think that that people might think of you differently or, um, you know, people might be not for the same goals that we are. Um, but, but our students find, and I continually find, that the more people that you talk to, the more of them say, like, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me, but no one else feels that way. Um, but, I mean, as, as you talk to more and more people, you realize that everyone feels that way. And it's, it's kind of about sort of coming out of the closet and not so much as, like, a drug user or someone who knows a drug user, but just coming out of the closet as someone who believes that we should change our drug laws. Right, exactly. And it does – it takes courage because you – if you're labeled in a certain way – I mean, some campuses are more conservative than others. It was easy for me to be a pothead on campus or be proud to uh, support, you know, changing these laws, but – it might not be so easy at certain campuses where there's a lot of pressure on students to think and act in certain ways. Certainly, certainly. Um, actually, though, I find that we that we, we kind of see the opposite effect, actually. I find that, that our chapters in, say, California, for instance, 
are actually less active than our chapters in in the really strict states like maybe Virginia or North or South Carolina. It's almost like there's more of a need for it in the in the harsher states and and so students kind of take that upon themselves. Um, whereas like in, in a state like California, it's kind of already, you know, that it, it seems like we've already won. So there people are less willing to get involved. No, I know that's definitely true. It's the people that really, I mean, because these people are suffering, they need it. In California, I guess it is a little easier on them. Um, but when you're really under the gun in some of these other states, I imagine exactly. you want to get everything done you can. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool, man. So how do people start their own? It, we talked a little bit about the process of actually getting one started here in Canada. It's as easy as, um, you know, calling in and talking to somebody. Now, what, what does it take, though, really? I mean, it's easy to, to, to set one up, maybe, but does, does it take a lot of work? How much time gets put in on campus? Great question. Um, so it takes about as much time as you're willing to put into it, and I know that's kind of a vague answer, um, but I'd say, I mean, if you're if you want to put numbers on it, uh, at the very minimum, it would need an hour a week. Um, I mean, to do it right, you need a few hours a week. But really, um, I mean, really, what running a chapter is all about is um, is just kind of organizing students, um, scheduling meetings, making sure people on your campus are talking about the issues, um, lobbying your school administration to change certain policies, or or lobbying your your state government to change certain policies. Um, but I mean, those, those are, you know, not, not every chapter is, uh, is lobbying their legislators. Um, the real, like, I, I think that depending on where you are in the country or around the world, sometimes it's more important to lobby and sometimes it's more important to just get the conversation started on campus. Like in, um, in Louisiana, for instance, it's much more important to just get the conversation started on campus and make sure people are talking about drug policy. Whereas in Colorado, you know, we were able to get something on the ballot and actually change a big law there. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it really, it's really, um, like, let me, let me give you a brief overview of what I did at West Virginia University um, as, as a chapter leader there. So I got in touch with, with SSDP National, um, just one of their, SSDP International, actually, um, SSDP.org, and uh, filled out their, their chapter startup request form. Uh, a few days later, their director got in touch with me, um, told me about SSDP and, and everything, how it worked. And, and um, I went through the process of becoming an official student organization with my school and started having meetings and, um, and started uh, working with our school to change policies. Very cool, man. That's excellent. Now, I saw on your website that you guys have some sort of a boot camp. How much um, you know, training and resources does the main office offer to the chapters? Um, as much as possible, we, we are here to be a resource for our chapters. Um, and in fact, like ha half of our staff, um, we only have four full-time staff members, um, and half of them are dedicated to just supporting our chapter network. Um, so we have events, like you mentioned, the boot camp. Um, we did that one that was kind of like a traveling staff tour. We, uh, we had one in Boston, we had one in Chicago, and the last one here is in Portland. And it's really just like, a hands-on workshop um, built to built to train chapters um, how to. I think the topics that we're covering were um, communication, how to properly communicate um, an idea through a personal story, through facts and statistics. Um, we talk about how to effectively manage your chapter and how to how to fundraise. Um, really, kind of the core of of how to um, of how to make a difference there. Very cool, and that the. Next boot camp is actually coming up tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, yes. The uh, the last boot camp in Portland is tomorrow. Um, if anyone is listening and is interesting interested in attending, it is not too late to attend. Um, it's just ssdp.org slash events, and you will find it there. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Drew, for coming on. Appreciate your time. Uh, we don't want to keep you for too much longer, but uh, it was great talking with you. Great, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. And if people want to get involved, they can just hit that website up, and that's how to, to throw your hat in the ring, I guess. Yes, sir. All right, thanks a lot, Drew. All right, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Students for Sensible Drug Policy, Drew Stromberg. Um, Marius, can you take care of that? All right. So that was very cool.
and uh, that was awesome of you guys to come on and talk about the whole thing today. I hope that more people do get involved on campus. When I was on campus, we didn't have one uh, at the Vancouver Island University. It used to be called Malaspina when I was there. But there were people who were involved in the issue. But uh, there's definitely a lot more people involved in this issue on campus now. I, I just know personally. What's that? Um, not yet. Not right now. We're gonna. I'll play another video. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Marius. Marius is on the <laughs> Skype board over there and on the big screen. Um, so MedMark brought some pot corn here, threw it on the desk. Oh, man, this stuff fucks me up. <laughs> Seriously, this stuff kills me. It's really good. It tastes delicious. Mm, I got the bong loaded. And MedMark's going to come on and chill as well. We gotta talk about a couple things. 420's coming up. We haven't had a chance to talk about that personally either. Jamaica. Oh yeah. Mm. That's right. This was a skunk magazine party, wasn't it? Yeah. We talk about the BC Pulse positions. Uh, all right. Well, don't tell us yet. Wait till you get on the microphone, and then you can tell us. <laughs> um. All right, boys. Uh, Mike and Yusuf, thanks a lot for coming on, guys. Much appreciated. Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy, Quantlin and SFU chapters. April 12th. April 12th. That's right. You guys can find out more about that in the show notes. Uh, it's already the link is there provided. There's the Facebook page, and you guys can sign up there. SFU campus in Burnaby should be good. Find us at your schools. That's right. Yeah, and set one of these things up. Get in touch with students for sensible drug policy. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Enjoy that popcorn. <laughs> but be careful. It's dangerous. I'm serious. Oh, yeah. By the end of the show, I usually eat a bag, of, like half a bag of this, and I'm just totally gone. I can barely function. Mm. All right, well, look at and Eric, the suit's in the house, too. Mark, why don't you come up here, brother? And Laurent's in the house. Sitting on the couch, chilling. Yo. What's up, man? What's going on? Good to see you, brother. <laughs> I'm good. Mmm, thanks for the goodies. You want a bong rape or something? Oh, I got a fat joint roll right here. Oh, nice. I brought some butter and stuff. Eric, why don't you, uh... Mmm. So, back, over. just, mm, just back from Jamaica. Yeah, this mm. was at the Skunk Magazine <laughs> Shouldn't talk about retreat. My mouthful. Yes. With, uh, Tell them about it. Uh, basically, Johnny B decided to have a retreat with, uh, the normal Women's Alliance. And uh, John Conroy, Ted Smith, uh, Rial, uh, and a bunch of other people, just to name a few. And uh, yeah, we had this sick ass uh, retreat in uh, Negril, Jamaica, at the Pier Garden Resort. And uh, we had workshops every day where we presented and came up with different ideas and what each group's working on and how we can uh, help each other out and uh, come up with ideas. And uh, yeah, it was with Urban Grower too, so we. Went all over the island and uh, also went to the Spring Break concert they had there and I uh, got to meet a bunch of reggae artists like uh, Bounty Killer. Mm -hmm. Got some great video with Microphone those guys. talking. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that's a little Internet. better. Yeah, are you yeah, out there? All right, that's better. Yeah, talk to your mic. <coughs> Gotta jack that up. Maybe Marius, you can throw a little bit on his mic. All right, well. He's probably okay. Don't for once now. You're gonna long. yell. Yeah. No. Now it's gonna be the opposite. He's gonna start screaming. All yeah. right. Watch out what you ask for. All right. Yeah. Maybe we should lower that a bit. We're all over the. People like it better. But on me, see what I see is it going in the red, and I don't want to be like chirping the mics here and stuff. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little teensy bit. I don't know. Hopefully that's not too much. The chatters gotta tell us. They they know best, right? Chatters, you guys know best. Um, all right. Well. Jamaica, so what'd you guys do? Was it actually, did any activism really happen there or was it just like a vacation? Because I wanted to go, but I really couldn't justify spending the money to get down there if it wasn't really like an activist event, it if was it was just a vacation. the best retreat I've ever done. It, and what got done? Did anything get done? Are you kidding me? Spending a week with John Conroy alone, alone don't you think that, that got something done? Oh yeah, I, you know, laying with him on the beach, getting a tan. Yeah, no, no, what, the way it was structured is we'd meet up in the morning at 10, and we'd come up with our day's agenda. Uh, we'd do activities during the day, and then at 7 o'clock we had family dinner, we called it. And then uh, we worked till about 10 or 11 at night every night. Nice. Yeah. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, and worked on what though? 
Uh, well, so we each did presentations on different things. So, uh, like for example, I want to do a uh, national uh, commercial, and uh, so we are brainstorming all the different uh, things that we could put in a commercial. Uh, we basically want to do it like a 30-second infomercial that we could put on our videos through YouTube or even on uh, a, a big network, right? And, right. Uh, so that was something that I came up with. Um, we also did. Uh, John Conroy did a presentation on the new regulations and uh, the whole gist of all that stuff. And uh, so we, you know, went over what our actual stance as a group was and the way that we thought we should move forward. Mm. And what stuff. kind of conclusions did you come to? Did you, how do we move forward? Well, in moving forward, the, the number one thing is we need to join the coalition. Uh, John Conroy wants to basically put an injunction in, uh, and, and tell people who John is. John's a famous lawyer. John's as big a constitutional lawyer as I think as you get, especially in Canada. But he's a North American QC lawyer. He's uh, probably most famous recently for the Insight uh, case that he did, where he got the BC government forced by the Supreme Court to fund the Insight safe injection site. Yeah. So uh, he's a huge lawyer. Um, just to be able to <laughs> he's not really like gigantic or anything, but no, he's, not like yeah. gigantic, he's right. just he's huge. Like awesome. he came with his, yeah, uh, he's 300 pounds. And, um, and uh, yeah, literally just uh, so anyways, but he was a wealth of information in terms of uh, which standpoint for me as a dispensary uh, where we fit in with the new regulations and also how to understand what the government's trying to ask for, say, the doctors to play gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, so um like news to me was that the the quarterly report from the BC College of Physicians, Physicians which is like the governing body of doctors in BC, uh, they the the head lady there came out, the CEO. She said that uh, that having doctors be the ones that prescribe the marijuana and also in charge of dispensing it, because that's what the new regulations want. Yep. Um, uh, is not right, and that they'd rather it be decriminalized, and basically they're going to boycott. The whole program in itself. So even it's already happening now. People are trying to go get their federal license. There's a lot of signs outside of clinics, and uh, they say stuff like, "Will not prescribe narcotics or federal license or anything like that." Right? They actually say marijuana licenses. Right. <clears throat> so I know at the care point centers in Vancouver, I've noticed them. When someone told me, I went and actually look. They're a, a franchise clinic here, and, and they have that on the outside of their sign. There's one on uh, Davy I seen. Yeah. So basically what that means is if the doctors nice. are going to boycott the whole program in itself, then it's not going to work. And uh, the doctor's problem, main problem is that there's, uh, they're not qualified and knowledgeable about marijuana to be able to, say, prescribe it. And they think that maybe a naturopath would be more qualified. And uh, naturopaths are actually more willing to prescribe it, I think, than, uh, than uh, a general practitioner. And uh, most people don't know, but like uh, naturopaths are able to prescribe antibiotics, give intravenous and stuff like that. They are qualified to give out uh, uh, medicine. But uh, more importantly, a marijuana is a natural plant with a very, very, very safe tr thousands of year track history of usage. Yeah. Meaning no one's ever died from pot. So it should be treated like a natural product and not like this some demonized you know, potentially killing product is the way they're they're trying to regulate it. Yeah. So yeah. There's Jody. Jody's here. Hi, Jody. Hey. Going good. Yeah, you're next. So in terms of uh, what our standpoint is, it'd be number one is to uh, join the coalition because the regulations they want are uh, not fair for uh, for people that are disabled that can't produce their own medicine and also cannot afford to purchase it. The government's basically saying that you know there's these people that aren't going to be able to purchase it because they can't afford it and also because they're not allowed to grow it now. So, and, and that's what's wrong with the new program. They're forgetting about the people that are not able to come up with the funds to prescribe it. Like other medicine that's paid for. I just got to say something. What? You have the shiniest, most beautiful nails I've ever seen, my friend. Thank you, yeah. I get on them, a man, uh, that is. I'm diabetic, so I, get, I go with my nice daughter. Nice nails. Again. Yeah, this is wax. Whew. They wax it on there. It's good oh, for your nails. Oh, sparkly. I don't know if I'm flattered <laughs> that you noticed or not, though. <laughs> well, they, yeah, mine they don't look them, anywhere. They wax on it, and then they buff them up. It's healthy nice. nails. I know. You're pimping, buddy. I am. Oh, and DML's you know, in the house. Usually <clears throat> girls notice. Today, it's well, Jeremiah. Mm. Hey. You, so, know, you know me. I got the uh, 
stuff in the mail. Oh, yeah. I could show you the uh, herb for herb stuff. Herb for herb stuff that cool. we're giving away at the rally en masse. Sure, show it off, David. Okay, so if you ever wanted to be a plant manager, you could be one. A plant manager. Wearing this t shirt. See, plant manager. Well, that's pretty cool. Plant, yeah. oh, plant hey, manager. Nice. And then it says on the back herb for herb, herb with for many herb. more pot leaves. You could be one of the herbatistas. So that's that's cool. Yeah. And then for special lucky uh, grand prize winning this mug, you can wake up happy with the herb for herb mug every morning. Legalized. And then everybody, no matter who they are, will get a button. The first 5,000 people to show marijuana up at the rally sales. will get a fix the deficit button and or a legalized marijuana button. Legalized marijuana. <laughs> Herb because herb, yes. Bob Herb won $25 million in the lottery, <laughs> and he's been a pot activist since the 80s. Yeah. And he has been spreading the money around and helping with the poster. This is Bob's, Bob paid for the posters across Canada. Canada. And uh, <laughs> he's been helping activists out so that they can continue with their good work. And uh, he just wanted everyone... I guess he had Yeah, he gave away a lot of cash to everybody for these 420 rallies and yeah. for all kinds of stuff. So, so yeah, he's been kind of funding the he's movement He's very now. generous. He's, he's stepped in where uh, Mark Emery could no longer fund people because he's no longer selling seeds. Right. Bob Herb took that lottery money. And, and that it's... means he gets to put his logo on the mug. Well, he... Yeah, his name is really Herb. His so. last name is Herb. Isn't that... So I thought it was because he majestic. ran for re-election and was willing to trade... Uh, Votes for a doobie. <laughs> yeah. That's what I remember. Well, he the 25 million did. Well, come he did. In yeah. Hand. No, yeah, he. But he gave money. Saying, but that's where I think the name Herb for Herb. Because that's his name, right? He was like Herb <laughs> for Herb, right? Yeah, he's for Herb. He is for Herb. If I'm wrong, his, that's his last name is Herb, and he is yeah. for Herb. For Herb. Yeah. So yeah. So if you show up to the rally, plant you get manager shirt. Buttons. I kind of like that one. Uh, probably. Do they uh, have anything that's not beige joints? Oh yeah. There's all all kinds of different color t-shirts. And yeah, there'll be joints at the rally too, thanks to a uh, uh, benefactor who's long supplied the rally with joints. Oh, good. Hopefully they have a booth. Hope. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll. No, have a booth. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. I they say have fuck a booth. those guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, but we're gonna have the t-shirt yeah. launcher, aren't we? T-shirt launcher. launcher, yes. Let's do that again. Afterwards. Yes. Tell my brother. No, that was totally awesome. <laughs> we totally need the T-shirt launcher. Yeah, that thing. As long as nobody sure gets in, in the, the way of the launcher, make sure it it's become... in the hands of a responsible adult who doesn't aim at eyes. That's right. Please, because we've had no uh, blind blinding of people Did so far in the rallies. Don't let. I thought we were good last don't year. let that hey, girl no, no, Tracy, who runs up on stage, grab it. Oh yeah, that was us. We're not letting anyone touch her custom-made T-shirt. That's right. No, you gotta control such um, yeah. projectile weaponry. Keep it under tight controls. It's a t-shirt love spreader. I think that thing yeah. really is what keeps the cops away. It's like they're <laughs> they're like we don't wanna we don't wanna they fuck with the t shirt gun. That thing'll take out thousand lit joints and a t shirt cannon. <laughs> uh, I think we're overwhelmed. So uh, there's also the contest too I I've seen on the poster. Yes, oh, there's yeah. four contests. David, tell us about the contest. contest. There's four contests. Prizes for best costume, best sign, best pot plant, and fastest joint roller. So if you think you got what it takes, come on down and pay very close attention to the stage announcements. Do you guys remember the bong sign that you could smoke out of? I remember you smoking out of I got video of it. Uh -huh. I can tell you right now, if you make a sign, you can smoke it up. You're pretty you much a shoe in for a win. If so. you make a sign or a costume mm -hmm. that you can smoke from, the crowd really likes that. And it, it is crowd reaction that we really base our, our judging on. So make the crowd happy, and you'll be happy too. You'll walk away with some fabulous prizes. Now, this is going to be the biggest 420 ever, likely. It's a Saturday. It's on a Sat Herb Day. We have the vag surrounded. Yeah, that's the, right. The total vag, uh, invagination of the vag, because we're gonna take over the Vancouver Hornby. Art Gallery. We're gonna take the over vag. Howe. We're gonna take over Georgia. We're gonna take over Robson. We will create a huge mushroom marijuana cloud at 4:20 that mushrooms. reaches up into the heavens that can be seen from space. Yeah. 
They will not be space. able to ignore us this year, and they will smell us in Ottawa. They will know that shit's in the air, folks. <laughs> I think they can smell you in Ottawa now. No, man. Stick a fork in its ass and turn it over, baby, because the drug war is done. <laughs> right, and it, but it's this weird thing where we have harsher laws, and they get, seem to be getting worse, but then we have more people coming out to our rallies, and we have more freedom. We're sell, there's people oh, openly selling the marijuana there. I'm good. That's right. It's not just before the dawn. It's a matter yeah. of... They're trying to regulate and control they're it trying to, the they're, They That's are holding the realizing range. that their population is completely out of control. That we are beyond their command. And we will, with the aid of public opinion and a re-education campaign... And some t-shirt guns. And some t-shirt guns. <laughs> and a copious amount of free marijuana given away at 420. Continue to assert our rights to be peaceful, happy, hungry, relaxed people, mm -hmm. and the flower children will one day be free. And everybody will have the right to grow, deal, and smoke any herb <laughs> that they like. Because Mother Nature gave us every plant and seed-bearing herb to use. I read it somewhere in a holy book somewhere. Yeah, they'll recognize our right to grow and use marijuana. That's right, that's right. We have right. the right, we we're asserting the, the right, right. We're, we're using asserting the right it. on a regular basis, and they will one day wake up to the fact, oh yeah, the monkeys get to use the flowers, yeah. 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 That's well right. Said. <clears throat> right arm. David, my favorite flower child. I love you, brother. Jeremiah. Christmas is almost here, 420. <laughs> disseminator of info. So, keep on disseminating. Keep on disseminating. That sounds almost keep dirty or something. Keep asking questions, Jeremiah. Uh, keep on disseminating and I'll be pulling for you. <laughs> well, David, are you going to MC the 420 event this year? I will step up to the mic and drop the science. Who else would? Let the 411, right. the skinny, the lowdown, the word on the street out to the peeps. Because that's what I do. I don't think anybody could do it like you do it, David. I've got, I've got shit going around in here. I've got stuff swirling <laughs> around in my brain. My <laughs> yes, you are insane. Crazy little mind. <laughs> and I can't wait to feed it to all of you so it swirls around in your brain too. <laughs> so come on out and I will blow everybody's mind. <laughs> Crazy Mama Levine. That's right. Yeah. You'll never know what Crazy I'll Dave. I'll just step up Come on down and get some and joints for Crazy Dave. I will, I will say shit that you've never heard <laughs> anyone say before and you couldn't possibly predict. I would say I will say that shit. Guaranteed. Right. Guaranteed. fucking team. <laughs> That's right. He's the used car salesman of pot rallies. What are you talking about? <laughs> used car salesman. Hey, this legalization model, this is like 1972. It runs great. Thank you. It's only been dropped twice. Tell you. Crazy, anyway, Dave. I, I'm going to make like a banana and get the fuck out of here. I'll see you guys later. Bye, David. DML. Since I can remember, he's been oh, on the mic. Come check out the museum now with extra lights on the ceiling. Chocolate. Come check out the museum now with extra lights on the ceiling. So it's, actually, it's actually lit now. You don't bump into things now. Well, you still do, but just not I'm as hard. for 420. I just needed a dose of David. No kidding. Is this the Chocolope? It is. It tastes really good. It tastes like perfume. It does. Chocolate perfume. Chocolate perfume. <laughs> How does it have that taste? I don't. I still don't believe it. Neither do I. But it's some still sort of spray. It, it tastes. Sure, clean, tastes good. It, it tastes delicious. Cups. Tastes delicious. More uh, popcorn. Little to no involvement with it, other than it's on my menu. Yeah, I know you can't speak for it, <laughs> but the people like it, and it does taste delicious. It won the Toronto Junior Yourself Cup and the Kush Cup. So. They won the Kush Cup, right? Or not, he's doing it right. Mm-hmm. And there's mm -hmm. some shitty taste in weed out there, I think. It needs to be flavored, so it's like... <laughs> haven't you ever had stuff? It's just like, oh my god. Yep. Too bad I'm in this, like, foreign country where I can't buy good weed and I have to smoke this. It needs to be flavored. Awesome. And it oh, is so flavored. Oh, signatures down. Oh, yeah, from I was wondering... Medicaid. Uh, there's over uh, 200 signatures here. Awesome. It's our next installment. So for Sensible BC. Yeah, for Sensible BC. So yeah, give them to Dana. I uh, posted a picture of me with them and tagged everyone I know that's involved with it. So if you got tagged, it's all because of me. <laughs> I try and you know tag according to if you're involved in it. Like Jeez. if I'm wearing a Two Mark Henry shirt, I'm tagging them and I'm tagging you too.
What's That's your right. Goals for you tag me in pictures of you all the time. I do. I I'm like, I'm not in those fucking pictures. But if, if, <laughs> if, if, if anything to do with TV. I know. TV, it's your way of showing it off if to me. If anything to do with TV, if I'm like, anything to do with TV, buddy, you're getting tagged. Sorry. Isn't there you're a way that you can it. share it without actually tagging me in it? No, I'm going to. This like, is the Facebook you can conversation. You tag. It's not like it's a forced thing. I, you're right. I do remove it. So I'm, but I do get to look at it, and I do appreciate that you pass them on because I like seeing the pictures. It's not like a picture of me. And I'm like, I'm so vain. I'm like, that's not me. Get off my wall. I'm just joking. The wor I get like the weirdest ones on my wall. You should go take a look at stuff I'm like tagging. Oh, you have stalk male stalkers oh, and. The weirdest shit that I don't even agree with. Uh, I got. I'll like look at it and I'm like tagged. In. There's pictures that I don't even want to be tagged in that I'm tagged in that like put me in a place I shouldn't be. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you put yourself in the place you shouldn't be, or is it just the photo that puts you there? I'm just joking. I'm perfect all the time. Innocent, perfect. On those trips to Asia. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, sure, Spain. sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spain. Oh, I want to see these pictures. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> um, well. So are you excited about Kush Cup? Did you hear? No, not really. Down? Not excited at all. I heard Lee. I'm kind of disappointed. And, uh, and Randy are coming. Well, I don't know if we can like totally. Can we talk about? Speaking of Lay, he and Randy, yeah. can we talk about that? Yeah, why not? Okay. All right. Well, we got some interesting news to break on the show here that Jody already talked about on her show, which is up online now. So it's not really breaking it here. It's already been broken on the Jody Emery show, but we're going to talk a little bit more about it when Jody comes out. So the, now the audience is going to want to get rid of you guys as quick as possible. But well, get rid of me. No, I'm just joking. I'll just be over there rolling anyways. Exactly. You'll be back. You'll be back. Um, yeah, well, maybe we should bring Jody out here to talk about what's going on with her. Because we still got, we have to bring Anya Ganja on in a bit. I don't know if that ever worked out with her. Um, I guess I should check my email. But, Jody, we should bring you back on. Okay, I warmed Or you up on, well, you haven't been on today yet, but... Ah, uh, recycling the heat. Oh, there's this. I know you're not going to smoke this, but I'll just keep puffing away on this thing. I'll pass it All around right. to you guys. Um, speaking of the trailer park boys. <sighs> right. Basically, I'm being flown to Halifax on Tuesday to shoot it for the Trailer Park Boys 3 movie feature film. They're flying me out to play myself in the To play Jody Emery. So they're going to have, yeah, I've got the script, I've got my flight, my hotel, everything's all arranged. And Can't yeah, hear. Just... How's the mic? Oh, too bad. Here we go. Not I'm hearing not a damn thing. Well, that's a shame. Okay. I could repeat myself. Is this the new Pot TV laptop? No, they're hearing you. The, the, the Should I just start over then? Yeah, start over. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm going to Halifax to be filmed in the Trailer Park Boys 3 movie. They, they needed an activist for a session in Parliament where they're planning to decriminalize marijuana. And they'd worked with Mark before, many years ago. It's on the Mark Emery Facebook fan page right now, by coincidence, that was posted. Um, but yeah, they wanted me to come recite something they heard me say in a video at some sort of event. One of my many speeches, they watched and they really liked what I said. In an, Maybe it might have been a TV interview even, I don't remember, but Mike Clattenburg had called me a couple of months ago now, it might have even been, saying that he wanted me to be in, that mo in the movie at a parliamentary committee, repeating the lines that I've guess I made up myself years ago or whenever I said they it. They wrote your lines into the script. Yeah, I, yeah, they wrote something I said into the script and they want me to come and say it. And so uh, Peter Mansbridge of CBC will be introducing me, like saying, we're cutting to Jody Emery now, live, speaking in Parliament. So I don't know, it's interesting. Ricky's going to be there. He's part of the scene. He interrupts right after I finish. And interesting. Anyway, really so cool, that's going to be new and, new and different. <laughs> <laughs> oh that man, it's really yeah, awesome. kind of funny. But I'm gonna be hilarious. exhausted. And so they have already come and hung out and stuff. They met Mark. They met Mark, and they did a little video with Mark for a concert here in town. But we have a Pot TV video filming them filming their show uh, in our store many years ago. So if you go to Facebook.com/slash Prince of Pot today, that video has was posted. Our Dana, our great friend, had that shared today by coincidence. So, yeah, I've never 
had to act or memorize lines before, but at least it's just something I've said, so mm -hmm. I should be able to remember you just that. Have to act like yourself. It's something about, you know, ending you prohibition be and all fine. that. You'll be awesome. I'll be tired. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had time to meet people out there. It's it's kind of sad that I won't be able to, you Maybe know, you take advantage. There's no time. It's a the other time. You it's won't full. Have any time yet. I wake up at take a 7 a.m. flight and I get there late. I mean, it's it takes longer to get to Halifax than it does to get to Mississippi and see Mark. Did they tell you how long you'd be filming for? I assume it's a whole day. I think it's a whole day. Yeah. They built a mock parliamentary chamber room, nice. and that's where the set is. And so I'm going to be there with like a senator, and the public is invited to, is being invited to comment on these plans. And I'm just for and some the reason. It's all about legalization. I guess so. It's about how I don't think I'm. Am I allowed to say anything? I shouldn't say anything. That's probably right. I should be wise and just. That's true. I'm not sure what if we're you follow to say. me on Twitter or, or on Instagram, I'll most likely share photos along the way. Um, if I get a picture with any of them, then and I don't like asking for that sort of thing, though. Now that I think about it, I don't. I don't have pictures of us with most celebrities we've met, and then I forget when we have met celebrities. That's true. I, I like Mark reminded me, Sean Paul. We hung out with him one time. I don't know. Oh, that was yeah. long ago. Yeah, there's no Tommy Lee. Anyway, hmm. point being, <laughs> I don't know what the point is. That's going to interrupt my week, and then I go visit Mark right after that. So it's busy on Monday morning. So you got Trailer Park Boys 3 movie on one day, and then prior to that, I am going to be speaking, or not speaking, sorry, I'm getting a tour of St. Paul's Hospital in downtown Vancouver. Right. Uh, this has been arranged for me because I'm running with the BC Green Party in the provincial election, and I'm running in Vancouver West End, which is most of downtown, and someone that's working on my campaign and also with the <laughs> BC Green Party He's done a tremendous job doing outreach and networking, and he's coordinated this for me. So I get an official tour with me meetings with all the different people in charge of different areas of the hospital to let me know about the concerns, because here in Vancouver, it's a real issue. It's a very old building. They don't get the funding that they're promised, and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and learning about that. So I'll be doing that with City Councilor Adrienne Carr. Adrian Carr. She's with the Greens as well. And she's elected to our Vancouver City Council, so she'll be joining me, and that's Monday morning, and then I'll do up some work, and then I'll get out to Halifax, and then I'll film for the movie, and then I'll go visit Mark, and then I'll come back and have to campaign like crazy for my election. You're a busy girl. It's, and we're also running two BC Marijuana Party candidates, too, and I have to take that's care of that right. this weekend. And Willie is going to come on the show, and is actually I'm really? supposed to send Tyler to go get Willie. So that's Tyler, really awesome. He was just down here. Oh. Yeah. Willie Awesome. He's Willie Awesome. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone wants that's uh that's pretty much we made a all I've got for to you. say. Yeah, we designed but he's great. He did <laughs> flyers and the handouts and I had a campaign event. And if you guys want, I you know, some be I don't like asking for money and some people don't have money to give and those aren't the people I'm gonna ask this to, but if for some reason you would like to support my campaign to run for our provincial government, which is similar to a state government. Um, you can donate to my campaign. You can donate any amount. You can donate from anywhere in the world. Uh, but British Columbia residents get tax credits back for donations made uh, after the writ drops. But anyway, point being, if you live somewhere and you'd like to support my campaign so I can get our message out there, my slogan is justice, peace, and honest government. And the BC Green Party has great core principles about that, and they definitely believe in ending marijuana prohibition. So I'm happy to run with them again. I've ran with them once before, and the guy I ran against is now all out legalization with Stop the Violence BC and other organizations. And so you can have kind of an impact. I'm sure you felt that way before, but I gave him lots of good talking points, I think, perhaps. So anyway, point being, donate mm -hmm. at jody4mla.ca or just jodyemery.ca, and you can contribute to any amount to my campaign to help me print up the buttons and the signs and I'll go out on the streets and hold up my signs and give out handouts and let people know about you know ending prohibition and increasing freedom and security and liberty for everybody and and saving money and you know there's so many reasons why I think I have some things to talk about <laughs> anyway I should let you bring on more people I know it's a long show and it looks like BC marijuana party candidate Willie awesome That's is right. gonna be Coming up yeah, here, so I'm going to take awesome. off. Thanks for coming on, Jody. That was yeah, excellent. you guys can help out at jodyemery.ca. Yes, please do. <laughs> Go to jodyemery.ca and help out the campaign.
Yeah, it's cool that they don't have to be from BC to help out. Yeah, except the Green Party wants to change that. Green Party that. wants to end that. I guess it kind of, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, it isn't, it's not fair, but damn it, we're using it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I don't know. Now that maybe we shouldn't, who knows, that's a tough one. So quietly send Jody money. I'm just joking. Willie Awesome. Hello, Jeremiah. Oh, bring the whole set down, why don't you? I will. <laughs> That's how Willie does shit. Um, do you want some of this popcorn? Uh, yes. It's it, really is good. It, uh, is it regular Infused? popcorn? No, it's weedy. It's weedy? Hopefully my okay, mic, I'm not driving is my mic better now? Uh, it's, I hope that it's not too loud because I'm seeing it going in the red here, but it's good, says Rom. Thanks, man. Mm, so, Willie, you're one of two candidates running for the BC Marijuana Party. We don't have a full slate this year, to say the least. <laughs> We have to run a a couple people just to stay afloat as a party. But because the Green Party is doing so much for the pot community, the BC Marijuana Party kind of just endorses the Green Party. Yeah. Yeah, so... um, But we definitely need a couple candidates in the race just to bring attention to these issues. Well, and that the party still exists and that we're... We want to keep the party going. So (laughs) tell people why you wanted to be one of those candidates. I wanted to be one of those candidates to show that... uh, uh, to, to change an image, uh, uh, to have a chance to change the image of a cannabis smoker, because cannabis smokers, I think, from, from the people that aren't on our side, are often viewed as lazy people that, uh, that don't have much drive or ambition at all in their lives. Bearded long hairs, you mean? <laughs> yeah, and I might be uh, bearded slightly <laughs> long hair, but uh, I'm, I'm up at 7 o'clock every morning at the latest for my job kind of thing. I'll be up earlier to get signatures for our you petitions. you got to get up early to prune that beard. And you can't, you can't get signatures for an election with putting in, without putting in your extra time and volunteering your time. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very important thing, I think, to have the image as, a, as unlazy as possible. Right. As exactly. industrious as possible. That's right. And well, you do a great unlazy job around here, man. Word. You're constantly here working all the time. And uh, to, to run also to, to get opinions out there that are the BC Marijuana Party's opinions that maybe the Green Party can't get out or the NDP can't get out as easily as maybe, you know, as loose-tongued as I might be allowed to be as compared to people that are more established in their parties. Right. Mm. This stuff is really good, man. <laughs> So, yeah, the, and Steve Finley is the other candidate that's running with you. Steve's yes. a great guy as well. I talked to him, and he seems like he's going to be awesome. For Now, you have to collect 100 signatures. 100 signatures I do have to collect. And what's your riding? Uh, my riding is Vancouver Mount Pleasant. So uh, our uh, BCMP offices down here is actually in that riding. So if you want to help me out and you live in that riding, come down here and get high and uh, sign my my forum so that we can get me on the ballot and into the election. I'm already going pretty well on my way to getting all the signatures, but all the help I have is... Uh, but you got to live in downtown it. Vancouver. You have to live in the Vancouver Mount Pleasant riding to sign, uh, to sign this forum. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might be, I don't know how hard it... Jody and I went out to get signatures for her Green Party campaign, and we collected all of them within two hours. Now, the thing about that is we had a sign, and yeah. you know, Jody is a quite attractive young lady who it's easy to you know approach and so on and so forth but Willie it might be harder out there but are we going out this weekend or what's going to happen I'm not as attractive as, as a young lady well you but. are very handsome <laughs> Willie very but I will attractive. be uh, I'll but be. it might be seeing what about the riding I wonder if that's different because there everybody was like super proud to be part of the riding when you're here I, one of the great things that we found that worked was ask them are you from this area that's are you way. from Vancouver it's, yeah are you, well, and if you start from this area, people are like, yeah, they're like, they want to be from this area yeah. or something, right? So they like want to talk to you about it. Uh, but anyways. We will be, uh, we will be out gathering signatures at well, as well. I've just been gathering them here, and I already have uh, 16 of the 100 that I need. So we're going strong. I'm very confident that I'll get all those signatures, but I need all the help I can. So if you want to help me and you live in the Vancouver Mount Pleasant riding, Come on down so my loud voice can be heard by all the other politicians. Exactly, man. Um, well, very cool. 
it's good to see you taking the uh, the reins on this one because we needed somebody really good to be able to do this. Willie, you're great. Oh, and you get some time on the CBC, don't you? Yes, I have uh, two minutes because uh, uh, each party gets to put forward two candidates with two minutes of radio time. We only have two candidates, so we're both going to get two minutes of radio time. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes of radio time. It's on the radio or on television? Uh, I think it's on radio. There's a Jody said radio. Oh, it's when CBC he was talking radio. I Jeez, that's wrong. the only bone television. They throw. Tele television would be cooler. That's all they give you. Huh? It's like I'll give them two hours on CBC. I'll two. use my loud voice to try to get some TV time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can pull off some stunt or something. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guy in pot costume. Hanging off a bridge, swinging off a bridge, or like, you know, shimmying up the side of a building or something. I've have you ever thought about somewhere that like spider, you know, the spider guy who climbs the building? I think that would be terrifying. <laughs> I'm sure you could learn how to do it in a couple days. I hope so. <laughs> that would be a very effective way to gain votes. It, well, it might actually be. Well, we were hopefully we were, not. I hope people are thinking more than just, "Hey, we that were, guy's climbing a building." <laughs> Having a political, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be great. Be good in a press release. Yeah, we were having a strategy meeting about your campaign earlier today, and uh, we were thinking about what were we thinking about? I forget now. I forget totally what we were talking about in our strategy meeting. Oh, we were talking the about popcorn. Yeah, it is the popcorn. This stuff actually, it's true that this stuff literally wipes my brain away. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> we were talking about going out and getting your signatures, and we've got to get like a hundred. Is yep. that how many you need? A hundred and more I'm, than a hundred because uh, we need seventy-five. We go for a hundred because that way we account for mistakes people might make, or if uh, you know somebody is IP freely or something like that, or some other not real name. Mm. <laughs> right, and well, that and that's the interesting part is that. You, your name will appear very, very high on the. It's Austin. Your last yep, name is Austin. 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 So you'll probably be first on the ballot. Unless we have which, an Andrews or something like that. It's, that's right. So that's going to be funny. A lot of people will just see William Austin marijuana party and be like, "Oh, there's my guy. Bam, he's the easiest. He's at the top." And it's funny they do, you know, testing on these things. A lot of people who it's a choice position on the ballot to be at the top. It it's really neat. Is. I didn't know that actually. You, what's that? You did? I did not know that. You didn't no. know that? No, it's definitely a choice position. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I've read this. Maybe that's one of those old wives' tales, but I'm pretty sure that's true. That being at the top of the ballot is uh, is definitely beneficial. Well, that's helpful because I think I think BC, anyways, has one of the most frustrated political climates right now because people are going into this election going, I don't know who to vote for because I hate you all because you've all lied to me in the last 20 years, mm. and uh, it's. The only ones that haven't really are the are the Greens and then all the fringe parties out there, like the Marijuana Party and the other parties that are not not as well known. And I think that any party like the Marijuana Party has a better chance probably to grab some votes in this election because of the fact that people are frustrated with the NDP, frustrated with the Liberals within this province uh, that, that would normally vote for them. Like I'm, that, that, that would normally vote for those parties because of either things that happened 20 years ago or things that happened a few months ago. Right, exactly. Mm, they're always voting the parties out. Yeah. Well, BC is the, the worst, worst, worst province for that. We always want the, uh, the current guy out and the next guy in. Exactly. Which is good in a way, always getting constant, constant opinions can, on the can voters. Can you pour some of that water in this glass for me? Yes, I'm really thirsty. I'm eating a lot of this <laughs> popcorn. Mm, thanks, Willie. What a guy, what a guy. See, that's what the BC Marijuana Party is all about. Helping Kindness. Others. Yeah, that's right. Kindness and popcorn. Compassion, liberty, and freedom. That's right. And we're, this is the actual headquarters of the BC Marijuana Party. That we're broadcasting to you live from right this minute. And I'm going to put together some stuff that will, uh, I guess, go on Pot TV. I'll get to you and uh, for, I guess, my own YouTube channel as well. Uh, another thing I want to do during this election, because I know from working here and talking to people like you and uh, Greg Williams, Marijuana Man, and all the people around here that the political opinions that are valid go way beyond just marijuana. A lot of them are tied in to marijuana, but they go way beyond that. So I want to make sure that people know that 
we're always thinking about all the issues that are going on, especially in this neighborhood. There's always lots of right. like heated discussions mm -hmm. on things that are happening that everybody's having heated discussions about, whether the, it's bike the, lanes or sky train fares. Right. I was going to say, the BC Marijuana Party is not a one-issue party. <laughs> no. The name just says it is. Yeah. It just, uh, <laughs> exactly. That's just too funny. That's so funny. How's it going? Uh, did somebody? Say, I heard my name called, but I can't. I don't You're know. Am I, am I high now? I'm there. hearing voices. I'm seeing things. Um, cool. Well, thanks, Willie, for coming on. And people can find out. I don't know if the BC Marijuana Party has a, their website up and running right now. We do have a website, but I don't know if it's up and going. Yeah, I am tripping. I'll get something together for cannabis culture either way. So when they can go up there. If we can get that. That's right. We need like a you know a sign with your face on it. The thumbs up, Willie face. Give us the thumbs up, Willie. Yeah, that's right. I want that on a on a placard. And uh, placard. And uh, if uh, if anybody has any questions uh, they want to ask or anything uh, for the BC Marijuana Party or for me, uh, come down here as I said and uh, enjoy our office, which is a pretty awesome office and sign my uh, nomination form and ask away your questions because I'm sure I either have the answers or a way to get an answer to the question from our perspective. That's right, Willie will rough them up. <laughs> Very kindly, without any actual roughness. Mm -hmm. Just words. That's right, kindness and popcorn. And uh, as I'm, I'm going to take off and get back to... Uh, to work here. You want a bong rip? I do want a bong rip. And uh, everybody out there watching this pot TV, I'm sure you are. But if you're not, make sure you get out and vote. Doesn't even really matter if you're not registered. As long as you have your ID, take it to the polling place and vote because that's the system we're working with. And if we don't vote, that's how they win. The conservatives would love us to stop voting so that uh, they can have all their people go out and vote. That's exactly what they would like. So please get out there and vote. Vote, 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 vote. Yeah, you have to vote because pot people don't vote. And, and that's, that's why sad, pot's still illegal. Sad thing about it, man. It's true. Because they know we don't vote and don't care. And it's true. Unfortunately, it's reflected in the numbers that people like us don't. Young people in general don't really vote. So I guess they're disillusioned. Or they don't care because they're watching <coughs> Jersey Shore. Thank you. I know that's Willie's favorite show. Oh, Jersey Shore, yes. Awesome. I think the only images of Jersey Shore I've ever watched are when Beavis and Butthead were making fun of it. <laughs> Actually. Ah, good old B and B. I love Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> it's that one new season. Mike Judge, right? he's a funny guy. And um, yes, all right. Get out there and vote. Especially if you are smoking weed, it's gonna be illegal if we don't fight. And it's gonna be legal if we do fight. That's so right. Vote. Fight. Get but out there not and vote. With Willie these. Awesome says vote. All right. Vote. I don't. I don't care who you vote for. I have ideas who no, you should vote, vote for. No, don't vote for the conservatives. But yeah, just don't vote for the conservatives. Yeah, not them. That's just an awful idea. Vote for any. Vote for Justin Trudeau if you have to. Voting for the conservatives but is like voting for pain. Don't vote for the. Have Funny. fun being high, everybody. Peace, Willie. Thanks, man. Um, and I guess, Marius, maybe we should get Miss Anya Ganja on the phone on the Skype. Where's the fire ice red beer piece? It's at my house. I didn't bring it today. I will bring it next week. Um, it's sitting on my mantelpiece. And I just didn't want to haul it down here today because I had my hands full with other stuff, unfortunately. Um, I, I keep it at home because it's a, more of a personal bong. I don't really want to leave it at the office because I'm worried about something happening to it. So, Oh. And yeah, maybe you can turn that thing so I can see her. Aha. Can you, you can see me? Hello there. Howdy. Uh, we, we can see part of you anyway. <laughs> There you are. Oh, look at you. There you are. How's it going? It's going good. How's Anya? It going it's going good. It's going very good, actually. I'm very high now. I've eaten this bag of popcorn. Um, oh, yeah, see, I, I have you over here. But if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at the camera. <clears throat> it's not because I'm ignoring you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Halfway 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm already, no, it's kicked in. It's kicked in already, for sure. I'm totally high now. It's, uh, <clears throat> it definitely destroys me, so I might not be totally coherent through this interview with you. <laughs> I think coherence is sort of overrated, so it's okay with me. Good call, good call. So, the Stoner Girl's Guide. That uh, is your creation. You keep uh, disappearing. I, I don't know what's going on over there, but I see the... Oh, there we go. But at least we got to see the logo. Tell us about the Stoner Girl's Guide. Um, it's funny, because I keep trying to think of how it actually started. And the first thing I can think about is the conversation I had with you last year at the expo. Where I was like, would you want some stuff? Like, what about, like... Netflix stuff or whatever, and then my friend and I were talking about it, uh, World's Best Grandma. We started the Stoner Girls Guide to Netflix, and that was just a little bit too constricting for us. Um, so we wanted to, you know, cover every topic that we could, which is now what the site does. Awesome. Yeah, and you guys have been doing some great work. It's been fan really good stuff, and we've been posting some of your stuff on Cannabis Culture. And so yeah, you guys thank can... you so much for the support. I mean, I think... All of us banding together is what needs to happen in the movement, right? So I really look forward to having a, a long-lasting uh, relationship with cannabis culture. Awesome. Yeah, no, I really like your stuff. It's really hilarious. <laughs> and you have a team of you have a team of people with you as well. It's not just you. But tell us about some of the other people that you write with. Um, so Anya Ganja is sort of my alter ego. Um, now I'm starting to write as my regular ego as well, which is Jane Coxwell. Um, and then World's Best Grandma. So I'm turning 28 this summer. World's Best Grandma, she just turned 20. So in the 20 to 30 box, but our range, like we're at very different points in our life and with what's happening with us. So I'm just finishing my degree. She just got her driver's license. Uh, I see. So, you, have you ever been diagnosed with schizophrenia? Because <laughs> uh, of uh, the alter egos? Yes. <laughs> so, I'm like, where's the line between... Like, I sort of think every woman should have an alter ego to, um, oh. to say things that they feel like society doesn't want them to do. That's but, right. But uh, it's more to protect my dad, because he really doesn't like it if I use the F word or anything. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> so, no. So, I mean, it was a way to, like, not traumatize my father. I see. Oh, we have a dial pad. <laughs> Marius. Marius is dialing numbers. <laughs> Marius is trying to get some 1-800 number he's been trying to call for days. <laughs> old episodes of uh, the Star Wars holiday special. He wants the t original tape. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, I have a void it's gonna be in my life. I really want to see like a montage of every hand that gets cut off in every Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, there are a few hands cut off. There's so many. We did the, <laughs> like a marathon over Christmas, my family and I, and it's it's outrageous how many hands get cut off. Wait, how many hands are cut off? I can think of two at least, but in, in the cantina, oh, of course. Oh, I think it's like eight. Eight hands? Wow, George Lucas must have some sort of weird hand fetish or something. Yeah, I also don't think it's very practical to, like, fight in a cape, but, I mean, I'm not going to be critical of George Lucas, so... Well, that's true. Maybe it was filming requirements. You know, you got to make it look in a certain way. And hey, if you're stuck in a cave with a snow monster, what are you going to do? <laughs> you got to fight your way out, don't you? Or you could try and use hug power like David Malmo Levine. I don't know if that would work against the abominable snow monster on Hoth. <laughs> um, I think it's hard to be connected with you guys. You're just doing a weird thing. Yeah, I, I keep seeing your logo here, which is a nice logo, actually. The Thank Stoner you. Girl's we just guide. did that. I mean, you're going to see a lot of changes on the site coming up soon because right now I'm in the middle of all my term papers, but mm -hmm. um, over the summer I'm really looking to have the site turn into exactly what we want it to be. Very cool. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I, hope, I hope her mic is loud enough for you guys. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's as loud as my mic, but... There she is. Marius, can you... Somebody pick up the phone! Nice. Ah, there you are. That might be better. 
Very nice, very nice. So, uh, so what else is new? Where are you broadcasting from there? Um, I'm in Peterborough, Ontario right now. I go to Trent University. I'm finishing up a degree in sociology here. Oh, very cool. And so what's going on? What's the closest 420 rally to you? Are, and are you going to it? I, I will be going to it. We actually have one um, in Peterborough, right down the street from the police station. So Very so cool. <laughs> nice. And the, how are the cops there? Um, they like to come and take pictures of us and not wave back. Ah. But <laughs> yes, we've never had any problems thing. with them. Our, our events here are pretty small. Um, there isn't sort of the, the safety of numbers that people feel, like in Toronto. Like if you come to these rallies, you're really quite visible, so it, it limits who comes. But we've yeah, never had an issue other than they will come and park their van like a couple of different spots and take pictures of us, but that's okay. Creepy. Yeah, that is creepy. <laughs> That's one word yeah. to sum it up. Creepy. Yeah, that is pretty pretty creepy. Yeah, the cops do similar things here. Actually, in Surrey, that's one thing that they're known for is taking a lot of photos of the crowd. We were out there when George Bush came, and they had all their video cameras. The cops all had cameras, and everybody was shooting the crowd. It's pretty strange. Face detection. They tell you in the BC license place not to smile because their face detection recognition system won't work. Don't sm so everybody should be smiling? Yeah, no smiling in your pictures. Yeah, so smile in your pictures. But isn't uh, that creepy? I'm always smiling anyway. <laughs> All right, so I don't know why we haven't had you on the show yet. We should have probably had you on a long time ago. I think I caught you on uh, a show, maybe it was the Myrnawana show, not too long ago, actually. Yeah, it was, might, may have been a controversial episode of the, the Myrnawana show. <laughs> I think I'm really hoping that's one thing I hope my dad doesn't see <laughs> safe, but. She was on a controversial episode and that was I don't think that you bared any skin or anything or maybe you did I don't remember I can't remember no. no and that's with the stoner girls guide we really try to walk that line between like celebrating um, sexuality but not uh, going into the land of objectification. Not to say, like, I'm totally for people doing whatever they want with their bodies, but, I mean, I try to walk that line between, you know, only taking my tit out at the library at school to prove a point rather than on pot TV. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> well, at the library, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Is there a live feed of that anywhere? <laughs> There are, there are pictures of it that one of my guy friends has, because he was there, but uh, he won't give them to me. Ah, well, I'm sure they're on the internet somewhere by now. Creepy. Mm. Why wouldn't he share the pictures? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Well, yeah, that's In Vancouver, we share any nude pictures we take of the people that we took the pictures of. Oh, I've got a ton of, of you that I haven't shared yet. I was going to play him on the show today if Wiki you want me to. WikiLeak him? WikiLeak. That's why I always get those things on Twitter that's like, oh, this person's spreading terrible rumors about you, or look at these like naked pictures, and I'm like, yeah. oh, this is exciting, and then I realize it's, it's always spam. scam. I'm like, I'm Trying to oh, sell you cool pharmaceuticals. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, some sort of drugs or fake drugs. Yeah. Are you guys coming out for the expo at the end of May? Uh, yeah. Yes, we are. We'll be out there for treating, treating yourself. Um, Marco Renda, actually, I was just finalizing some booth space with him. So, yeah, we should be there. You're, I, that's where I bumped into you for the first time, I think, was at TY. It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that... You got a picture of my blueberry haze outfit, which I'm very happy to have. Oh. It's immortalized now, so... Nice, nice. Yeah, TY's fun. What do you think of TY? You like it when you're there? Yeah, I, um, I volunteer with PACE, People Advocating Cannabis Education, and we do a lot of work with Treating Yourself magazine. So, not last week, but the week before, I was in uh, at the Home Show in Toronto, um, at the CNE there, uh, just promoting the expo and helping people navigate the medical marijuana system in Canada. So, Very cool. Are you going to come to the Kush.ca party? Where is that? <laughs> Vapor Central. 
Oh, uh, afterwards? Yeah. See, normally I'm volunteering for, for Marco, so I've never made it to an after party because I've always been so tired at the end of the day, but I, I hope to make it out to some That's of the after right. parties this year. I think I tried to entice you to go to one of the parties last year. Yeah, you got, I think you got me pa passes, actually, okay. so. But yeah, yeah. we have to do like... Uh, you didn't use the passes? The she never showed. Show. Oh my like, god, showed. that's the worst. I was like, I, you know, stay late. Have, someone would have used... You know there was free <laughs> alcohol too, right? It was free like, booze. Yeah, it was like a bottomless pit there. Not that I advocate drinking or do so myself as yeah, much as I'd like I to. Don't, Devil. Don't do that much. <laughs> Devil juice. <laughs> free things are always good for We'll sure. make sure to give you a pass for this year so you don't show up again. That's right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't give her a pass and she'll show up. <laughs> no, I definitely want to go this year. I'm not sure what's happening with uh, what days I'll be working or where I'll be working there yet. But well, I'll tell Marco that you need another. to be at the party if you're working for Marco, as you say. That's right. Where, why isn't Marco at the party? Yeah, I, I thought Marco tell. was at the party. We did No, we did a vape on the lake party, too, where we did the 50 joints at one time, that new machine that we got. Yeah. It's a good video. Urban Grower put a video up of that one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, she's like, I'm so not going. That's what she's thinking right that's now. That's nice, because now I can see you guys. Nice. Oh, you couldn't see before? <laughs> see, we had no idea. You were looking she, up at the ceiling or some something? Some weirdos and, uh, and come talking. I could just see, like, the laptop. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Great. I've been looking at you the whole time and said He's been staring deep into your eyes the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I was I, actually I was staring deep into Marius's eyes. Yeah. Right here. But the bong is that. really impressive. Oh, uh, that's what all the ladies say. Are you say. really talking about his bong? That's what all the ladies tell me. <coughs> um, that's, I definitely like to have some uh, feature some some boys and their bongs on on the Stoner Girls website. Oh, I see. There you go. For all the ladies. Jeremiah all pumped up with his bong. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Bruh." laughs> like, <laughs> Wife beater on. Shirt off. Yeah. No. That, look, that whispery, smoky look in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that look is always there. Oh, yeah, show that off. Yeah. I'm positive shirt that has or no to shirt. Happen. So, Colleen Green, the girl that I did um, the interview with that you yes. guys were so kind to post. Yes. Um, she's going to be in Vancouver on uh, May 14th. I'm not sure the venue yet, but she's also uh, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, the 26th to the 28th. She's doing Eastern Canada there. So, for those who don't know, explain who she is. Colleen Green? She's like a pop. A punker girl that's a self-described stoner. I mean, all of her music is about pot, cartoons about pot. I mean, it's the total lifestyle that she's representing. And we named her Stoner Girl of Spring. Um, we're just too high all the time to choose a girl every month, but we really want to celebrate <laughs> women um, in a non-hypersexualized like hyper -sexualized way, because that's a lot of the pop magazines. It's girls in underwear, right? So really right. celebrating them in every possible way, and I mean, Creativity and marijuana really go hand in hand, so we were really happy to name her our first uh, stoner girl. Yeah, that's great. That's very cool. And you we can another... help you if you need to find girls to like feature. Jeremiah's well, really actually, good at that. Somebody oh, suggested yeah. to me <laughs> at the home show this you. young woman was talking to me for a while, and I'm like, oh, you should check out the blog. And I I told her the name, and she's like, oh my gosh, me and all the ladies in my office follow that, which was the nicest thing I could ever hear. But nice. she suggested that I try to get in touch with Biff Naked. Oh yeah, yeah, she's so great. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> I've I have a bunch of I used to shoot a lot of photography at my university, and she would visit our school all the time. And I, yeah, we should get in touch with her. She's very cool. And I know she is a, you know, down with, well, I don't know, but maybe she doesn't want me talking about it, but I'm pretty sure she used to be down with smoking herb. Well, so. she had cancer, so I know she's yeah. very pro-health, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she's I've a great, started, great singer. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get her for, for the summer, maybe. That's my goal. Um, and starting to get a lot of response already about the article I wrote about accessing medical marijuana for Crohn's. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about was the Crohn's disease article that's on the front page of Cannabis Culture. Both these articles that you're discussing here are on the front page of CC right now. I think, unless they've been pushed off already, but they should be. If not, press the more button at the bottom. Nice. So yeah. So I've been, emails I've been getting, people have been thanking for me writing that, but really expressing their... Um, <coughs> 
utter hopelessness as far as accessing medical marijuana, even though they have a total right to it. Yeah, it's really sad, actually. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult and it's not going to get any easier. And, you know, now here in Canada, when things are coming up, it's going to get harder. People aren't going to be able to grow it themselves anymore, even. They're taking people's personal cultivation away. I can't imagine how that's not going to limit access even more. Yeah, it's the most horrific thing I can possibly imagine happening. I mean, if, if you look at this group of chronically ill people who are already financially oppressed through multiple avenues, barriers to accessing employment, disability obviously doesn't give anybody enough money to live. Um, the fact that they're taking away free medication from them is a human rights violation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I personally can grow 20 grams a day, and that's like 600 grams a month, and at like 8 to $10, that exceeds my wage, my salary. So, like, how am I supposed to procure my medicine? Right. That's Smash and grabs? Myself, Smash like, grabs? I'm a very lucky person to have a scholarship <laughs> for university and stuff, but I couldn't afford to pay for my pod, and I smoke, I use less than most medical marijuana patients for whatever reason, I don't need that much of it. But I couldn't afford it, so how on earth can any of these other people afford it? No kidding. No, I don't know how people really do it. And so, for those who don't know, Crohn's disease, this is something that affects the stomach, essentially, I guess. And the rest of the body as well, but can you tell us about how that affects somebody and how, how the relief comes from marijuana? Um, so, it's autoimmune, so my immune system is attacking anywhere from my mouth to my ass, which always makes me think of Kevin Smith, but... Oh, no. Um, Terrible. Just horrific pain, and Michelle Rainey talked about it, and she was one of the first women I talked to in the movement when I was first diagnosed. It's essentially like you eat broken glass and Lysol every morning for breakfast, and you can imagine how that impacts every second of your day. And cannabis has been proven to relieve every single symptom. And like my mother is very proper and she was really against me using medical marijuana, but she saw me before and after. And it's the difference between me having to go to the hospital or not. Like there were times that I would be like curled up in a ball crying and my brother would go and get me pot and then I would come back to life and be laughing and watching TV, right? Nobody can see the difference it makes in Crohn's disease patients and deny them that medication, but doctors don't get to see that process, right? Like my mother was against it, she saw it. Now if I'm sick, she's like, have you smoked, have you smoked your marijuana today, Jenny? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's amazing the difference that it makes in every single symptom that Crohn's disease causes. That's funny, my parents were the same way. I went through cancer and went through chemo and my mom was against it and saying my dad, my dad used to be a cop, right? But they actually seeing it stop nausea you know, like puking after your chemo and like you go for your treatment during the day and then you go home, right? So and you, normally they just give you drugs in the hospital, but marijuana is amazing like that. Mm -hmm. That's I can relate to what she's saying with the parental being actually, to see it actually work like that. Speaking of amazing things, look at this joint that you just rolled. Um, this has goo that in goo inside of it. Half I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah, look at this. Again, it's, it's very amazing. It's like th covered, soaked in this goo. Um, and it's this stuff. I don't know. Did you hold this up to the camera? This is the goo. What is this exactly? It's Some sort of honey goo. oil. It's a honey oil. Alcohol-based honey oil. It's really sticky, even on the outside of that. Very little clear. Thing. Very little tasty. Vial. I wish we could show it. Laurent, can you do a favor and bring that up to the camera and show that off? And maybe put your hand like right up behind it so that it focuses on it. See the. And yeah, like. Oh that. wow! That? Have you done hand modeling before? Oh, that that was very yeah, fluid. <laughs> A little closer. Oh, yeah, look at that. Delicious honey oil. Mm. <laughs> you guys look like you're looking at like a pornography website. Uh, well, I am we are. actually. We are. What are you talking about? I am looking at a pornography website pornography. over here on my laptop. Laurent's doing some other stuff over here, but yeah, I wasn't even paying attention to what he was doing. An interesting story about um, medical marijuana and Crohn's disease. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, I'm sorry to call them out. I think they do a lot of amazing things for. Um, inflammatory bowel disease patients in Canada, but they had an alternative health symposium. 
So they asked me to get a speaker for this alternative health symposium on medical marijuana. So I did that and cool. it was one of the doctors that uh, always comes up to the expo. He was more than happy to speak at it. I got a message back from them saying that the scientific board denied it because there isn't enough evidence. But they, this was an alternative health one, right? So they had all the naturopaths and the homeopaths and everything there. I asked to speak with the board and since then they haven't returned a single message that I've sent them. Wow, that's crazy. <clears throat> now, sorry, where was this? And just for the audience, I would never miss this. I go there every year, but <laughs> sorry, say the name of it again. <laughs> <laughs> Say the name. What? Uh, what is the name of the conference that it was, or the the the? The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. It was an alternative um, symposium. And where was this symposium? Where do they hold this? This one. It was the the Kingston chapter, I believe, was having it. Wow. And so they... this is years and years ago, but. I'm like sociology, it's, it's all about studying social movements, right? So I'm really looking at small um, small battles that I can try to win. So trying to get the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to support medical marijuana is one of my goals for the summer. Awesome. Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, made you a, I may march across Canada with a donkey topless. That's my like <laughs> last... <laughs> Last resort, because donkeys are the most oppressed animal in the world, right? They're the most often abused. Everyone's mean to them, so I think it sort of represents. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and I'm canceling the, the show. The cat, yeah. <laughs> the cat just moved the camera, and the cats always want to direct the show for some reason. They really feel like they. I don't think they like the shots that we pick, so they're like, no, we're gonna readjust oh, things man. just a little bit here. Yeah, He's, thanks, Marius. No, that's perfect. You got it, brother. I got pictures of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I you love the cats. The cat. Nice. I got a picture of the cat fucking with the camera. Yeah, we have two cats down here. Now, you haven't actually been here before, have you? We have four I cats. Haven't. It's been a very long time. The last time I was in Vancouver was for a newspaper conference. Uh, I grew up in a, a journalism family, so, I mean, I, I think I was 14 or something. Mm. A journalism family, and how was that growing up? Everybody arguing. Uh, it was over. good. So, a month before I was born, my father um, started a newspaper, so I literally, like, spent almost all of my time when I was a little tiny kid in a, in a newspaper learning how to do everything there. Very cool. And, He's uh, going to be so happy to hear that Jody's going to be in the trailer park boys. Because <laughs> I mean, the free, everything free mark my dad is, is really into, so the combining of trailer park boys and free mark is really going to make him quite happy. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. That's really awesome that Jody's going to be in the movie. One way I tried to get the word out about Mark, you know how you guys have the silicone bracelets? Yes. So they fit perfectly, perfectly on top of a volcano vaporizer. Oh. It's so like a it volcano almost bumper. just looks like I have this like special Mark vaporizer. But yeah, ah. it's just the absolute perfect size for the top there. So That's it's sort of a conversation funny. piece, right? Like anybody that comes into my home and sees my vaporizer, I get to have the opportunity to talk to them about Mark. Well, we have a volcano sitting right behind me here, actually. But yeah, I can see how that would be really cool. That just made me miss the sublimator. Miss the bumper. <laughs> you miss the sublimator? You love right. the sublimator. Right? Yeah. Well, we don't have a sublimator around here. I, I should bring it down right next now. time. Um, Al has a sublimator, but... Mm. Have you tried the sublimator? No. Everyone's getting one soon. I don't even it? care. I don't even care about it. It's a new vaporizer that you can use extracts in. It's pretty efficient, and I think it's yeah, it's good. Everybody loves the sublimator, and everybody's going crazy. Love like super like loving the sublimator. But I mean, it's just another bong. It's a cool me delivery it's method. It's not just another bong, Jeremiah. There's no. All right, talk about it. Beats out a bong. blowtorch. Jesus. You can just keep feeding extracts into it. It's awesome. It's. I'm not saying it's just another bong, There's but a, it is just a bong. It's a vaporizer. Right, okay, I retract my statement. It's not just another bong, but it is a bong. A it's bong a, that vaporizes. It's a, it's a vaporizing bong. That does extracts All right. efficiently. I like this sublimator. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's not like I'm making any money off the damn thing. Yeah, I know. I just like it. Everybody loves it. Nobody's making money. I actually off told the guy, hey, if you want me to help you, like, I'll help him, like, get it made and stuff like that. And because uh, he's having problems with his distributor, right? Eh? They're not like really gonna pay him any money. Yeah. I was like, dude, you I should I really just do like the sublimator, and I really like Enrico. I think he's an awesome guy. Yeah, he's been a cook his whole life, man. He's hilarious. The guy is a funny guy, and he's a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the product is a nice product. I can't believe that you're eating more popcorn. I probably shouldn't be.
It's funny, by the end of the show, whenever I'm on, the pod cards always got the best of them. Yeah. Now, who else should I... There's Marijuana Man. Mm. So, I don't know. I'm really high now. What were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about, but... I walk across Canada topless with a donkey. Oh, right. See, I wasn't sure if the donkey was going to be topless or if it was you that was going to be topless. Yeah, I try... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to find an appropriate academic anarchist to try to help me. Mm. Um, to really try to... I mean, it's it's hard for me to think about that the past three years of my life, all I've done is study social movements, but I still don't see a clear answer to what has to happen here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just... It's horrendous to think about how many people are essentially being tortured because of people's morals and propaganda, right? Right now, are we talking about the drug wars just specifically, or are we talking about the political system in its entirety? The lack of access for patients. <laughs> it's all connected, right? It is all connected. So you've been studying these social movements. Now, you said you said what you were trying to find an academic anarchist, did you say? Yeah, I'm looking right now um, into one anarchist in particular means so I'm just doing, they don't like if you just come to them and you haven't read all their research, right? So going through his research and just trying to um, form an alliance there to have him essentially mentor me on really shaking things up in the next year. That's very cool. And so what is it that you're, you're interested in libertarian socialism? That's, you know, the more technical term for anarchism. But what is it about anarchism that you're interested in? I just think that it's a really like extreme form of a social movement. So not even having that with the end result, but just the sort of um, profound change that they look for, trying to recreate that within the, to start the medical marijuana system for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> I really am a huge- really we're going up against big pharma, right? Like they're more powerful than our government. Wow, that's good stuff. What are we looking at here? Or Asha sent it to me. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't want to see that. That's terrible. Don't show that to the camera. Um, <laughs> but, jeez. Uh, uh, yeah, now I lost my train of thought here. Yeah, so anarchism, I, yeah, Demanding the Impossible is the name of a really good book that, uh, that I like. I can't remember the name of the author, but it's The History of Anarchism. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of Noam Chomsky and not just his theories about the media and the political system, but he's an anarchist himself. He's an anarcho-syndicalist, and he's somebody who believes that there's something called wage slavery in society, where essentially we are slaves now, kind of the same way that in the slaves in the past were, but I mean, very different in certain ways. Obviously, we're not bound down and under, like, you know, they can't kill us now, but he says essentially some of the systems are the same because people starve in the streets in the United States and die from poverty. And it's, it's like they're being oppressed in that same way. Um, and really now they just have the choice of who they want to be their master, McDonald's or Burger King or whoever else. So I'm, I'm actually, I would fashion myself King. as a Burger King. I love the Whopper. They got so tomatoes on their gonna burgers. If there's going to be a king for me, it's the Burger King. Yeah, they got tomatoes Whopper. on their burgers. Well, in sociology, there is the term the McDonaldization of labor, right? It's, I mean, efficiency, productivity. I mean, these things are more important than human mental and physical health. Yeah, it's true. And it's and hard. And I definitely think there are Crohn's disease patients that are dying. Like, there's over 200,000 of us, but I think it's like, a lot, thousands of us are dying every year, and I, it's impossible to prove, but would they not be dying if they had medical marijuana? Because certainly if I smoke two different strains every day, I don't end up in the hospital, so, I mean, how much of a difference could it be making in the death rate? Yeah, I'm sure it does make a difference. Yeah, and it's really sad that so many people that could be helped by marijuana right now aren't being helped by marijuana because of these ridiculous rules and doctors just not coming on board. It's really sad. I think that it's symptomatic of a larger problem with the type of medical system we have, though, where doctors are more focused on, you know, they're not focused at all on the holistic side of things, 
preventing things before they happen or helping people. It's more treating these things after they happen. And in a lot of ways, you know, if they can't synthesize it and they can't measure, out, measure it all out in a particular dose, then they're not interested. So things like Chinese herbs and all kinds of stuff just don't fall in their realm at all or don't even, they won't even consider them. And they're kind of treating marijuana like that now. Well, that's the issue. I mean, they're thrusting them, they're thrust into a position of making a decision on something that they have no training on, right? Yeah. They really don't know anything about medical marijuana, which isn't to blame them for their ignorance. I mean, it's the medical association, it's, it's the schools they're going to, but. That's right, it's very true. But it's an interesting thing, how do you change this cultural, I mean, obviously the people that run those medical schools, they have a reason that they don't want to put marijuana on the curriculum for some reason. So how do we get them to change it, I wonder? Well, to me, it's like who's, it, in sociology, we're always like, who's benefiting from this current system, this current power dynamic? And that's the pharmaceutical companies. Right. They're yeah. the only ones benefiting from this. Nobody else. The most the profitable industry really in the world. <laughs> yeah. My favorite quote. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want marijuana. Police budgets. It's a renewable huge. resource. It grows everywhere. You can't control it with your synthetics. You can't it control grows it with everywhere. Patent. If you can't patent it, they don't want it out, I guess. It makes people happy. Yeah. You can eat it. It's high in protein. I've been eating it all afternoon <laughs> here. Man, I am really super fucking high now. Oh, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. It was awesome. Thanks it's like, so much for having me, guys. It was very cool. It's almost 6 o'clock, so we can we'll keep We'll see you right in Toronto. We're going to go straight till 6 anyway, so you're welcome to hang out till 6. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost 9 here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, right, of course. Do you want to see Time the most so stone driver's here, license? So the most I mean, stone I'm driver's license? I'm not even high yeah, right sure. now, but it really trips me out that we're talking, but the different time of day where you are than where yeah, I am. Yeah, it's still light out here. Oh. Marius. Yeah, it's so still there's still light shining that through the windows. Would like to see the Stoner Girls right about? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, what? What? That's the oh, highest. My oh open. my god! I can't believe this. Okay, just you got to show this off, Marius. Show this to her first, and then show the camera. You got to hide my uh, really address funny. on it. It's not. I don't really live there. Oh, hide your it's address. One of my addresses. She can see <laughs> your address. That's Mark's. Driver's license. Photo. My one eye's not even open. I got as high as I possibly could for my driver's license p picture, so that if I get pulled over and the cop says I'm high, I'm gonna be like, no, this that's, is me high. That's definitely and then the I world's highest the driver's, driver's license photo that I've seen. My one eye's not even open. I swear. You should. You gotta like clip this out and put it up online. On I will. Facebook. I will. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, He's hiding good. the address. Go hard. Yeah, put a little closer, Marius. A little closer. Tilt. Oh closer. yeah, there you go. Look at that. He's got one eye closed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's very funny. Thank you. Um, oh, geez, what to write about. My God. I'm yeah. definitely going to, over the summer, I'm going to be, like, I worked for a couple of years as an addictions counselor. That's, I originally started at college doing a drug and alcohol <laughs> program and then worked um, as a residential counselor. So I'm looking to look more at... Um, Behavior modification, not towards marijuana, ah. uh, which I don't think is addictive at all in my professional experience. But behavior modification—that sounds very intriguing. That's that's a little bit better than what I was going to say, which was pandas. No, I'm just joking. Pandas are amazing. Uh, pa <laughs> I mean, they definitely need to be written about. Pandas are very important. We can we can definitely put pandas on the blog. Maybe right? panda mind control. You know, panda or. Pa <laughs> I'm sure that those are related in some way. I don't know how, but... Oh, yeah, that's nice. I'm going to be working, uh, <laughs> helping my parents on their organic farm. So I'm going to try to do the Stoner Girls Guide to Farming, sort of, just the basics. Because, like, if there's ever... When we run out of oil, my parents that can grow everything and, like, kill their own chickens and stuff are going to be the only people that are going to be able to eat. So I'm going to try to, like, impart that knowledge to the rest of Canada. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking to start doing a lot more uh, video things and get a YouTube channel and put the. I don't like being on camera, but getting used to that. So. There you go. And then it's like kind of like a stoner girl's guide to stoner girl guides. And that's what it'll be. <laughs> I guess I've had too much popcorn. <laughs> 
You're <laughs> eating more of it right now. Mm -hmm. It's just so delicious. I can't stop. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous. I can't eat any. I haven't had medibles in a really long time. Mm. They shouldn't make it taste this good if they don't want me to eat it. Mm. Okay, I posted on Facebook. Nice. Everyone wants to see the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sent it to my friend right now, and he just sent it. Asked me right now. He said, "Is one eye closed?" <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. That's awesome. Um, how, did, how did they allow I that? I wish photo? I could give you a bong rip through the Skype screen. Do you have a bong yourself? Are you a what about bongs? She's anti bong, um, dude. I just have my volcano, and then I have oh. this amazing pink caterpillar pipe that James from One of a Kind Glass gave me. Um, but it's super dirty right now, so I'm not gonna show anyone that. You say I just have my volcano, like that's some like normal thing in passing. Like, oh, I just have my Cadillac. <laughs> a vaporizers, yeah. yeah. I mean, I used to have a herbal air, and it's it just can't. It, it's too much maintenance for me. I love the Volcano. I actually, I don't know if I'd be able to afford to buy one myself because they are like 500, 600 bucks to actually purchase a Volcano. And they're good. They're better for you. They're healthy. You know, if you're using it for medical purposes as well, you might be interested in using it because it's, you know, it's sucking hot smoke into your lungs <laughs> isn't necessarily, though it's not proven that there's anything that bad for you, um, it is a carcinogen. And though pot cleans that out, faster than anything else, it's probably best to not have it anyway. But the Volcano is great. I won one in a contest. Yeah. David Malmo Levine, get out of jail party. David got out of jail. He was in jail for four months and I put my name in a draw and I won a Volcano. It was awesome. <laughs> That's, I got mine, um, it wasn't new, it was from the Vapor Lounge, so I got a pretty, a pretty good discount on it. So I mean, otherwise I would Sure. That's right, and Mr. Cookie, sorry, Mr. Cookie said sponsored by the VSB. That's right, I have to drop that plug. Sponsored by the VSB. That's VSB, VSB. Vancouver Seed Bank. Check them out at VancouverSeedBank.ca or .com. Well, this was fun. It's like two minutes to six, I guess. I guess we should wrap it up, guys. Always, because so, uh, you never know. That was dope. Always was wrap it up. Good really show. good advice, Jeremiah. I'm wrapping things. Always wrap it up. That's right. Do you always take that advice? Yes, why not? Well, with, you, with Eric, you have to. Yeah. I'm a married man. Yeah, well, that's why. Even more of a reason to wrap it up. That's right. <laughs> it's funny because I can't see who's over here, but I can just see smoke coming up. Like, <laughs> Who can you, how far can you see who over? Oh, yeah, you can see those three. The bong is the line. I can't see past the bong. Right, Marius, you get to see Marius on this side. It just looks like there's smoke coming out of my head. Ah, uh, yes. There is. Well, you look, there's, yeah, there's smoke coming under your head, for sure. Well, well thanks thank for coming on. thank you so on. much for having me. All pandas will be on the blog soon. <laughs> it's good to see a woman uh, so well-spoken, fighting for the cause. We need more girls like you, so. We just need to meet more girls on Pod TV. We don't have enough yeah, girls on Pod TV. Where, yeah. You should have a show on Pod TV or something. Well, that's, so I'm, I'm finishing up school here and going back to where world's best grandma is as well so that's we have a high def camera we're gonna start filming stuff so and she works in a grind house it's called the grind house cafe a very pot friendly um coffee shop so we'd love to um shoot some shows over there for sure well well we'll see you in may salad yeah jeremy i can't wait to see you we'll see you in may <laughs> awesome. and uh but we we should definitely talk about that we should we'll make videos should do a live show because this yeah, is yeah, we stuff. can make videos. This is spot. It's, it's I'll be quiet now. Sorry. Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were trying to be all like cool. You're like we'll make videos. Stuff. Yeah. It's a good cop, bad cop. I'm looking routine. forward to Toronto. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Ty will be great, but we'll I talk. I can't before. believe that the expo is coming up this soon. It's it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, it is crazy. And 4:20 before that. Yeah, so 4:21st. If you're in Peterborough. Wait, is that where you are? <laughs> I've already yeah, forgotten. Just down from the police station. If right. If you drive past there, they'll, they'll Just down us. from the cop shop. That's cool, awesome. excellent. And thank you to all of the students for sensible drug policy on the American side of the border, on the Canadian side of the border, at SFU, at Kwantlen. Make sure to check out this weekend, or next weekend's, next Friday's, April the 12th event at SFU. It's the, can anyone go to that? I don't remember the name now, but I don't have it in front of me. Do you have to be a student? Yeah, no, anybody can go to that. Don't need to be a student. Sweet. It's open to the public. We should go there. We should go there. Let's go. We could go there and I'll film drive a live. You. 
What day is it? Friday? Well, it's on. It's during the whole day though. On Friday, we man, we could do the show from there. I guess that'd be awesome. I don't know. We'll, we'll try and work something out. It would be cool. DML and a bunch of uh, our posse, Chris Bennett and others, will be there to join them to show support. Yeah, and so, bring a camera. Yeah, it'd be good. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend on the West Coast. Yeah, and you two out there on your side of the world, on your side of Canada, separated by a train track. How cold <laughs> is it where you are before you go? Yeah, how cold is it out there? Um, Don't lie. Don't it's lie. Not, almost all the snow is gone. Wow. Almost all. So minus it's one? It's, it's spring for sure. Is, is stuff frozen or not? Um, no, like I'd go out in like a spring jacket. I don't think the ground's frozen anymore. All the robins are out. There was about like 150 birds outside my window all Sunday. And like my, it was my cat's best day ever, so. Your cat's best day ever. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Why, he caught one? Did he, the, 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 did the cat catch one? No, he just like... Well, then he was choked. He weird spot at the window, <laughs> like really intently looking out all day. And I was like, what are you doing, buddy? Like, why are you still there? And then I look out where he's looking out and just see this like massive flock of birds. Uh, he's like, chicken wings. He wanted him so bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, sometimes about a hundred crows gather in that same spot, which really... If I'm over medicated, it really freaks me out that there's like a hundred crows gathering. But yeah, it's like my neighborhood in Burnaby, the same thing happens. The crows run the neighborhood. It's like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Yeah, and if you haven't seen that movie, watch it. It's weird and creepy and freaky. Crows are creepy. <laughs> Did you ever watch The Skin I Live In that I recommended on Netflix? Oh, you know what? I don't think I did watch it. I remember you recommending Bandera's, it. Antonio everyone, needs to get really, really high. This and is my that professional one. drug and alcohol counseling opinion here. Okay, everyone all needs right. to get really, really high and watch The Skin I Live In on Netflix. Okay. That's going on the list. That's, that's going to be this weekend for sure. I'll try and harangue Jody to do the same thing. And wait, drop the website address for the blog. Um, just the stonergirlsguide.com. There you go. Add and me to Twitter, Anya Ganja, or you can add my regular ego. She's a slightly, slightly more proper, Jane underscore Coxwell, C-O-X-W-E-L-L. -L. Got a proper name. <laughs> but very nice. Um, and so you can also find Anya's articles on the front page of CannabisCulture.com or at least a select few of the ones that she sends us and we'll try and publish more of those. Whatever you send us, we'll publish. Also, Yeah, you... thanks so much. I mean, I'm really Ooh. excited for the Stoner Girls Guide and Cannabis Culture to have a long, um, loving relationship. <laughs> Aw, well that's so nice. We will, as long as I'm the editor, of course. Um, yeah, and this guy... Really, we really appreciate all the support that you did. And I mean, it was that conversation I had with you at the Expo. And I think that shows how important the Expo is for networking, right? I mean, it brings us all together. I really like the Expo, and I really thank Marco for what he does there. I think it's really great for the Canadian crew. It's good. We have, like, I don't know, it's, it's nice to get everybody under one roof for a little while on the business side of things and the activism side, because everybody's there. Like, everybody comes out there, it seems like. And it's not just... Uh, it's really professional. It is professional. It's in the same building they had the G20. That's right. But That's it's still love cool. There's still a vapor lounge. There's a big glass blowing display. There's a stage where people they have speakers and all kinds of stuff. So, so many awesome people go to it. That's the real thing about the show. Is a lot of awesome people. Yeah, for sure. Networking, key to life. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I guess we should wrap this. Seriously, wrap this shit up. We're already five minutes past now. Again, I can, can ask four more questions. Hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna get baked. Have a good night. And uh, drop the your website address is here. Oh, kush.ca and imedicate.ca. But kush.ca, uh, we're going to have Cheech and Chong and Ricky and, uh, no, Leahy and Randy for the Kush Cup. So uh, look for tickets. will be going on sale next week. Kush.ca. And also go to jodyformla.ca to find out about Jody Emery's campaign. Green Party, right? That's right, Green, Green Party. Green Party. Hey, Jody. And she's going to be in Trailer Park 3. That's right, in the Trailer Park Boy movie. And go to ericthesuit.com. Um, to learn how to grow a kick-ass heavy metal goatee, that thing is fucking kick-ass. While having a positive outlook on life. You almost like, you need like a, <laughs> one of those braid or like a, you know, just one of those like beads in it or something. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice.
All right, and thanks to Marius, too. Now, if you put the hat and the heavy metal goatee together, that would be just too kick-ass. That's like one of those videos I just Thanks watched. to Eric for uh, rolling the whole time also. That's right. He's spinning. Oh, Big and fatty. today Perfect. is the anniversary of um, Whoops. Kurt Cobain's death. Oh, that's why I saw that of article who? in Rolling Stone, Kurt Cobain's death. Yeah, that's a sad thing. I was a big fan of Kurt Cobain. Yeah, it's too so bad then. what Courtney did, eh? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, well, actually, there's a, there's a movie called Kurt and Courtney yeah, too, by a guy soon. named Nick Broomfield, I believe is his name, a filmmaker. Yeah. And he looks at some of the conspiracy theories about whether Courtney had him done. And there were a lot of people that said that Courtney came to them and wanted to pay them $10,000 to whack Kurt Cobain, including a guy named El Duce, who ended up, just after he talked to Nick and BBC, who was filming the movie at the time, he got run over by a train and died. Because that happens every day. Yeah, it's kind of a weird situation. I'd throw it under cool. a train. Kurt and Courtney, watch it and you decide. I don't know. Either way, R.I.P. Kurt no Cobain is Courtney awesome Love. music. She's a bitch. I don't know if she's a murderer, but she's definitely a bitch. Yeah, but uh, sorry, Kurt Cobain, and I either way. I quote from her daughter. Her daughter tweeted, my mom should be banned from Twitter. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, her family all hates her. Her dad wants her arrested for killing Kurt. Her own father says that she killed Kurt and wants her arrested. It's yeah. all in that movie. It's bizarre. Yeah, yeah well, strange. she but stood to like profit, so why wouldn't she? And, uh, yeah, she's psycho. But I don't I'm know really her. I'm impressed by how much I, don't know I know her. smoke and still put Function. together full sentences. It's, it's very impressive. I wasn't so sure I was putting together full sentences, but... Well, it oh, smells no, like teen sweet. spirit, so give her. All right, well, let's uh, let's take this out of here, Marius. Can you wrap this up for us, and we'll say Thank goodbye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, well, I'll do it from this side then. Well, peace, Pod TV. Have Happy a great lots. weekend. We'll see you next Friday. Oh man, watch the shows Thank coming you. up soon for some big guests. Have because a great weekend. Thank you. You too. You guys too. We're gonna we're gonna have some big guests over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned, Pod TV. Love you guys lots. Peace.